Shadow Smokers Legion. 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 Shadow Smokers Legion for life. Shadow Smokers Legion. Shadow Smokers Legion. Shadow Smokers Legion. Shadow Smokers Legion, baby. And for those that you couldn't understand that. Shadow, Shadow Smokers, Smokers Legion. Legion. Hey guys, Tony the Soy Sauce Assassin. Uh, it's what? Wednesday? Wednesday night. Uh, totally not ready, but we'll get the show going. Right? We'll get the show going. A uh, few things to talk about uh, with the camera closer. And today I will be smoking this cigar called Hoya de Nicaragua Reserva Especial. Uh, Quattro Cinco. Yeah, it does. It had to be a smart ass. Um, so, I think this is in uh, Petit Corona. It's a, it's a cigar provided to me by Joseph Sparacio. He sent a bunch of cigars to me. And you gotta ask, didn't he send me one of those cigars uh, called the Yagua? And I have it right here. Yagua, but the problem is that doing transit it got a little bit damaged right there so uh, I just realized that when I was taking out just uh, a little bit ago so um, I put a little bit of cigar glue on it and I probably let it dry out and then you know cure a little bit <laughs> and I'll smoke it on um, I'll smoke it on Saturday one thing for sure it smells very plummy very very plummy it smells really good right you can smell the, the the fermentation it smells really really good it yeah it smells like one of those dry plum like the the, the dry candy plum that you can buy from like chinese market that's how it smells like very very smell smell almost like a pipe tobacco so when you cut the cap, use that to patch the cigar. Are you serious? Does that even work? Is that real? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna smoke this one right now. I'm gonna light it up. And we'll talk about, you know, this week. Ooh. This one kind of damaged in transit as well. But it's not a bad, it's not a bad damage. It's just like a little cut, that's okay. So guys, cigar, I gotta smoke it. Oh. Probably kind of help uh, because I had that little slit to that area. This way, you're using the same tobacco. I don't know. I, you know what? I will not give that a try because <laughs> the the cap is already have shape. I can't just cut it off and put it on there. I don't know. I don't know. I think I'd be okay. There's still the binder there, so I, I think I'll be okay. I don't know. So, today uh, on the chat side, we have... Ta-da! Matt Hashimoto. So, a little skipping here and there, but that's okay. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, it's a thing. Okay. So that's something I've never tried before because I think the cap is already shaped specific way. You, uh, when you cut it, you gotta patch it on. I don't know. It's, even that, you have to cut the cap ahead of time, patch it on, and wait some more. So I don't know. Was that aging room? Yep. Aging room is tonight. So. Ooh. So yeah, I, I don't know. Should I cut it right now and patch it on with it? I don't know. 
I, I think I just leave it like that because I glued it like that Frankenstein before and it was smokable. So uh, I, I'm just gonna leave it like that. I'm not gonna give it too much crazy Frankenstein, you know. Um, about the cigar, let me see if uh, there's, there's any information about the cigar. Uh, da -da 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 -da. The wrapper is Nicaragua Habana, binder is Dominica Republic, and filler is Nicaragua. Strength median, and this size I think is the four and a half by forty-six. Very very tiny, very very tiny, very kind of spicy. I am using pet. Pecton, um, Pecton, 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 Pecton. So, I am using that. So it's not like I'm not using it. I'm using it. I'm using it. Okay. There we go. And Brett Kelly, what's going on, man? So we have Joshua Cruz. We have, uh. Uh, Josh Jones, Joe Sparacio, Cigar Mechanic, the one and only, uh, Brett Kelly, and Christina Harrison. What's up, Christina? Wonder Woman. Put a lot of smoke out of this. Little cigar, a lot of punch. Pretty good. It does. It does have a lot of flavor, but right now there's a lot of like a muddy pepper going on uh, with this cigar yep and then star anise a little bit of leather mr. Martin why not I don't know where my team is I don't know where's my team when so Daniel? birthday oh hey, happy birthday up, guys? hey Daniel doing, so yeah it's the week of Amazon Prime. How many of you actually bought something on Amazon Prime? Come on, be honest. Be honest. There we go. There we go. What do you guys buy? I just bought some more accessories for my griddle. There we go. Dog vitamins that I buy anyways. <laughs> dog vitamins? Wait, did they actually put dog vitamin on discount? Yeah. It's that uh, for arthritis and stuff, you know? Does that really work? I don't know. <laughs> Seems like it does. I don't take it. Because <laughs> my dog definitely has some arthritis and she cannot jump on the stair anymore like to get up the stair. She'll have hesitation. She'll wait and say, is it worth it for me to climb up three stairs to get up here? We had to buy doggy stairs for, for our dog to get on the bed. Like she can get on the stair, but she had to think about it. She had to like, is it worth it? Is it worth that pain? To jump on there you know sometimes if i don't want to wait i just carry it up you know but it's got to that point i i, I mean i can uh, i don't want to give her like you know painkiller and stuff like that because i don't know how much works how much doesn't because yeah. for dogs you really don't know you can just test right test half half an aspirin two aspirin three aspirin keep going until you get four aspirin but you know i i can't even say hey do you feel better doggy do you feel better now do you think you can get on the stair now? No, it's like, you can't, so. Did they put Bovita on sale? Doesn't look like it. I don't know, I don't know. I bought everything pretty much yesterday. Uh, John, uh, Josh Jones got JBL earbuds in the air fryer. Okay. Uh, for me, I bought some LED lights. I bought cutting boards. Because those things sometimes are just crazy expensive, cutting board, right. believe it or not. I bought envelopes in preparation for the, the cutter that I had to send out. Uh, I bought... What did I buy? Oh, I bought a USB CD-ROM drive. Because uh, computer building is going towards no drive now. Like, you know, you, 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 if you go out and buy a new computer that's like heavily built, they literally don't put... CD drive anymore. No. 
Okay. Mm. They literally don't put CD on drive anymore. So uh, I am prep prepping for that. Like uh, my next computer that I'm gonna build is not gonna have CD drive. So since the CD on drive was only like 18 bucks, I was like, yeah, why not? Psst. Right? I just bought one. Um, aside from that, what did I buy? Oh, here we go. Your favorite. Is it your favorite? Yeah, it's mine too. This is the number five. That's a huge one. It's a huge one. So, Martin. Martin. Oh. You guys are not gonna believe this, okay? First thing in the morning, Martin sent me a message was a naked woman. <laughs> <laughs> right, Martin? First, first message you sent to me was a naked woman. Yep. Yeah. On, <laughs> we'll talk about it that story my, later, later, it though. My naked woman. Yeah, it wasn't yours, but I, I, I you know, I, that's what I received. I was like, what the hell? Did Martin just went his way to that topic nowadays? Okay, but, you know, it, was, it is what it is. What's going on, Brendan? Brendan What's you, up, y'all? You do look up, younger mm -hmm. sideways like that, though. I look younger? Yeah, it looks like you're, you're about to, you know, join the B-Boys. And have you know have some you know b-ball games okay i'm gonna start visiting <laughs> all my accounts like this <laughs> it's just the, the the brim of my hat hangs over my my ear that's that i can't hear as well in so it helps to actually like you know bring in more sound and i can hear better yeah right yeah right your ear can't hear is because you automatically filter the freaking bullshit out of it you don't even hear it you gotta say the bullshit twice to hear it <laughs> yup. 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 What are you gonna smoke? I saw what you were smoking, Tony. I saw Matt smoking uh, the aging room cigar of the year thing. Didn't yep. come for me, so. All right. Martin. Martin. Uh, just a bundle stick. And the Salomon. Just a bundle stick and a Salomon. I've got the uh, the uh, Ipicario La Historia. Oh yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. It's like a spell. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, the clarity is too good on your monitor that, you know, it shows horrible. It was, <laughs> it was perfectly clear on my monitor. I saw it right here. It was perfectly clear. There was no issues whatsoever. It was huge, great, amazing, grand. Yeah, I am pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Christina said yeah. uh, cell that I had to charge it. Go ahead. Yeah, no problem, Christina. Got to cover the entire screen with your, your palm. It won't focus. Too close. Here we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Anyways. So yeah, um, in regards to that message, uh, people have been using hashtag Shadow Smokers Legion, posting all variety of stuff. And that really cannot help it because you don't own the hashtag on Instagram. No matter what you what kind of complaint you send to uh, Instagram, they, they don't give a shit. So yeah, sometime when you, when you search for hashtag Shadow Smokes Legion, you are gonna find a very, well, a person who think he's handsome, take all kind of pictures, and you're gonna find a couple of women who like to post their naked pictures for some reason. Really? Yes. I thought that was you. He thought they were me, and I thought they were me too. But recently. Yeah, my chest has gotten smaller, and that could not be me because okay. the one Martin <laughs> sent me was the all the way down. It's... Okay, yeah. I'll have to zoom. I'll have to zoom in a little bit more. My eyes aren't so good being older and everything, so uh, I'll have to zoom in. But from just you know thumbing through, man, I was like, oh shit, there's Tony. Yeah, but then if you guys see it, go ahead and just report it. I mean, that will actually keep the feet cleaner. Uh, just go ahead and report it. Report. Screenshot it first. Screenshot, send it to my uh, cigar mechanic first, and then report it. <laughs> and then report it, okay? That, if that if that floats your boat, do that. Do that, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Especially on Wednesday, just before I go to Bible study. That would be awesome. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so he can have a little bit workout, like about five-minute workout on his left hand before he go in. Or right hand. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Whichever one, whichever one works. Whichever one works. Fourteen, fourteen thirty, <laughs> sending it to me. 
That is Tony. Yep. It's close. It's close. But but you know, I think she looked prettier than me. So I admit well, she's that. Only got, she's only got three likes, so obviously the uh the hashtag's not helping a ton. <laughs> I didn't even I know it existed. Really I didn't even know it existed until last time we talked about it. Yeah, I, I think if she used hashtag Martina Maya cigar reviews, then it would uh, probably, uh, you know, I'm actually going to message her and recommend that she use that hashtag more. You, I don't think you can do yeah. that anymore. I think her account got banned today. Yeah, it did. Yeah. We, we oh, both reported like 20 times just so that yeah, we, we watch it get banned. <clears throat> I reported it when I found it. I continue oh. to just report, report, report until it disappears. I just keep reporting until it disappears. So, so you're saying I lost a follower? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't even comment anyway. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So yeah, uh, Brenda, you want to tell me more about cutting, cutting off the cap and packing it onto the side? You could not. You cannot do it while you're smoking it. You had to do it ahead of time. You can do it. Well, well, so when you cut your cap, you obviously have the piece left over. I mean, all my stuff's buried in the ashtray, but you obviously yeah. have the piece left over. And you, when you put it, put the glue on it, it doesn't dry right away. The pectin's pretty tacky, and you can actually hold it there for a second. But you're you're midway up the cigar on that, so yeah. you can start smoking that. The heat will actually help dry that glue, and will actually help it to adhere better. I already put some pectin on it, so I'm just gonna let it be like that. So we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, if, if you need to, if you need to cover that wrapper leaf, you just use the cap because it's the same tobacco that's used on the wrapper. So then you're not changing, you know, you're not potentially changing flavor in that section. It makes perfect sense when you said it too. But then I, you know, the the the, the cut is like, it's a cut, so it's like a hole yeah. with a cut on it. So it's actually it's not gonna cover the entire thing. I don't know. I, I will see. Well, you know. Why add it? If I'm at it, then we'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, I've used the cap to patch a lot of cigars, though. Yeah, last time I just Frankenstein the shit out of it with a lot of cigar glue, the pectin, <laughs> and, and uh, it smoked fine. So, yeah. so th that thing has no flavor. It just, it just it binds them together. Good enough, I guess. Good enough. What, right. the pectin? Mm hmm. Yeah, the pectin is a is a basically a fruit based glue that they use, and that that's what's used on the whole cigar, anyways. When they're putting the cap on, it, it's that that's what they use, and you can get it at your grocery store. Grocery store. Which part? Yeah, of you the can get it in powder. You you can get in powder form at the grocery store, and, and you just mix it up. It's used for all all different things in food. It's an edible. It's essentially an edible glue. glue. It's based with uh, fruit. It's a fruit based. Yeah, I know. Try like to you, buy in, in a, you know. I, I figure you can use like argar, it probably work. <laughs> you can use Elmer's glue if you want. Go get your glue gun and put it together. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Do not try that. Um, <laughs> Tony's smoking a cigar and it's got like these like the glue gun strings hanging down <laughs> from it. <laughs> Are we doing this right now? It's too early. I figure like not everybody's on. So. Oh. <laughs> the Hashimoto button. <laughs> a button, I already have it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Brendan, you if you got to run for president, Brendan, if you got to run for president, please do so already. Please do so. Why do you think I have these? You, you haven't, you're like, you're not on my ballot. I'm like a ninja, bro. I just, I sneak in. <laughs> <clears throat> You know, my wife has such trouble trying to fill out her um, election form because there was Dude. none of the name on there she wants. So you still haven't done it yet? Yeah. Dude, like this thing is. What? What? You guys have a lot of questions. Yeah, you're telling me. My sheets only have probably 10, 10, fill, uh, 10 things to fill. That's it. Well, Damn, I live in a. I live in, in Arizona here, dude. Like we're in we're we're in an interesting spot right now because there's a lot of Republican seats that have come up, and so there's a lot of stuff for us to be voting on. Fun. We have about thirty on ours. Thirty. Wow. Dude. Oh yeah. No, I got. Uh, I mean, dude, this 
This whole back section is just judges. But Damn. you guys don't have uh, th those like questions. If you vote yes, this will happen. If you vote no, this that will happen. It's all like people, right? That you're voting, not not questions. No, I've got, I've got prop two hundred seven, two hundred eight, uh, four forty four, four forty nine. Yeah, I got all sorts. There's all sorts of crap on this thing, dude. I almost just handed it to my neighbor and said, "Here, do it." <laughs> Josh, Brendan will never be able to run for Congress. He will go crazy. Number one, he'll go crazy with the stupid things that happen in there. Number two, he does not have time. <laughs> That's true. I would have to make the time for that kind of crap. But I would do it. If it, if it, if it I, I would do it. You would it do it, but, you know. Red, if it kept our state red, I would do it. On your state red? Your state is red. Yeah. Well, it's purple right now. Yep, that's ours. It's redder than Massachusetts. Yo, it's better than a lot of the states. It's better than being blue. Well, Massachusetts is blue. <laughs> Yeah, close to being a blue state it's not even funny it's like 4852 oh it's scary dude what the it's hell scary. is this i want to pass a lot uh are you still thinking about running for congress i i am thinking about it actually um but i i don't know i don't know if it's going to happen but i am definitely considering it well that's the back of the band this actually something what are you smoking? The Quattro Cinco. It says this special blend is a tribute to Hoya de Nicaragua on its 45th anniversary and to the establishment of the premium cigar industry in Esteli, Nicaragua in 1968. Share your Cinco, Quattro Cinco. Experience with us, <laughs> blah blah blah. Advertisements. <laughs> oh shit. Raymond, I thought I thought Pecton was a little green guy from SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> you know SpongeBob. At one time, is so popular that you know people in Asia was watching it and had no idea why they watch it, but they watch it. My sister's two son watches it, and they were like teenagers at the time. That's funny. I gotta look that up. Now I have to look that up. Hey, cat. I don't think that was pecked, wasn't it? I have no idea. I have no idea. Morning sunshine. What are we talking about? Pecton to be a, a, a there's a there's a SpongeBob guy, SpongeBob character. Oh, Clinton. 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 Yes. Thank you. If anybody knows what Martin would, he's got young kids. Yeah. Yeah, my kids watch it. Yeah, I didn't watch it this oh, weekend. That's okay. Sure. <laughs> Still crappy patty. Still secret formula. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, have, really? I, I don't have kids. So, <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah. Um, Brenda, what did you buy on Amazon yesterday? Be honest. What did I buy on Amazon yesterday? Uh, uh, half inch NPT to uh, three eighths NPT female female fitting brass. Uh, a handful of uh, quick release airline fittings. Uh, Ten foot of five watt battery cable. Uh, fuse panel. Uh, Twenty relays with the wire harness. What else did I buy? You bought, you bought, uh, you know, Jeff Bezos a new boat, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I bought. Uh, Self soldering and uh, heat shrink uh, butt connectors. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Stuff. Now you meant now, from a Jeep. now that you mentioned it, I actually number one. I forgot to buy. Who's number one? What? I thought Travis was number one. For what? Number one customer. <laughs> Number one customer. Uh, does anybody, anyone know? Does the Mil Mil Diaz, Diaz have two different, two different bands? I don't know. They do. 
They but, do. There yeah. was a um, there was a pre-release, <clears throat> which are not supposed to be sold. They were only given Correct. to the retailers to give as samples. Um, and then there were the um, the one that actually had like an M. That's the produced uh, Mil Diaz. Yeah, the actual release. Yeah, thanks to thanks to Brendan, he reminded me because he says soldering, and I remember I didn't buy Flux. So yes, thanks to thanks to Brendan. No. You're welcome. Literally, I'm buying Flux right now. <laughs> You're welcome. What's up, little B? How you doing, brother? Huh? Pretty good. Doing pretty good. God, let me open my eyes. How have you been? God let you open your eyes? That did not make sense. What do you mean by God lets you let you open your eyes? This is Matt Hashimoto, Martina Maya, Daniel Martin, and Tony Yulong. <laughs> you can say hi. I mean, geez, seen, you don't uh, have to hide. I've seen Matt Hashimoto face on top of a cigar. So you're not really in your hands in the picture, which oh. is not you. There you go. Hello. What's up, dude? This this is Brandon White. Not to be confused with Brandon Wells. He's kind of a mini me. Uh, Brandon. What's up, guys? I can see he, he's a victim of uh, 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 got that got tricked into this Bible study. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean that's the only way we get him, Tony, is we gotta sucker him in. Yeah. We promise him wine and stale crackers. No tacos? Damn it. Every time. It's me every time. <laughs> I told him to bring me your broken cars, I'll fix them. Oh man. So, so if, if you ever want to watch reviews on my cigars from somebody that hates all of my cigars, Martina Maya <laughs> cigar reviews is the one to watch. <laughs> Quick thirty, what's going on, man? Yep. Martina, yeah. that's one for you, buddy. <laughs> keep keep count. Yes. That is one. That is one. So yeah, I've been smoking a lot of cigars this week. I like I had it today. I had it today. I was like, yes, Wednesday. I am going to smoke with you know a bunch of people. So I was like, you know, maybe I'll smoke something cool. I definitely did plan to smoke that Yagua. Couldn't smoke it today. Uh, I don't know. Maybe later it'll be dry enough to smoke. I don't know, but I have to see. Dry to enough, see. bro. If I leave a cigar on my desk for like ten minutes, that sucker like self ignites out here. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's you over there. Over here is 67 degrees right now. What's your humidity, though? Humidity is uh, 50%. 67 and 50% outside of the humidor right now. Outside of the humidor. Uh, uh, it turns man. to dust. Yeah. This is 49. Well, yeah, when I pick it up, you say 49, okay? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's how dry you are. <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with that? Tony needs, Tony needs lotion. <laughs> he picks up a hygrometer and it starts dropping. 50%, no, 50 humidity in the house is actually really comfortable. 50% is a good uh, humidity sure. to have in the house. So. My house stays at 65 and it's pretty comfortable. 65 that well that's relative right because you're in you're in texas and, right and, you know, so it, it gets hot and all that stuff so for over here 50 percent or below is actually normal it's actually how uh, uh quite comfortable during the winter we are like 10 percent so yeah matt's head is like big now ours is like 30 percent and our noses start um freaking bleeding no, well, you don't want it too high, right? Because anything over seven, uh, over sixty is gonna give you mold in the house. So, with that, when you know, especially your rooftop, yeah, it's gonna mold. <clears throat> so, fifty percent is good. Right? That's that's what I like. So when I put in like my stuff, my dry boxes, forty five percent is perfect. That's how we do it. Well, if it helps, we're we're a nice, cool, balmy ninety degrees here right now, uh, and uh, twelve percent humidity. Not We're my getting type. below freezing tonight. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I got, I got my jacket because I think we're supposed to drop down to like 79 tonight. So I've got to make sure I got my jacket out. <laughs> this is why I can put cigars anywhere in my house because humidity like that. So, 
temperature and humidity like this, pretty much it's like a humidor. Yep. Yeah, if, if we have a sensitive cigar, like a, um, you know, like a thinner wrapper, by the time you get to that final third, it's starting to come apart and unravel because it, it's just so damn dry. <laughs> that's, that's why you guys don't have like crazy snows and stuff like that, right? Because it's all dry, you know, barely any rain and then you don't have to water the plant. Uh, you know, it's, it's okay to not keep grass. Over they in Massachusetts, if in you Arizona? don't have grass, your neighbor complains. Y'all have plants in Arizona? <laughs> yeah, I got, Cactus? I got, a, I got a big lawn in the backyard. I, with no water. I got a bunch of trees and a big grassy backyard. You know, oh, you yeah. Get, well, you got the money, huh? You can afford the grass. <laughs> uh, I, have, I have landscapers. So I can... <laughs> <laughs> you know, Brendan's place is actually pretty nice. You've been there, right, Martin? Huh? You, yeah, you've been to Brendan's place? It's actually pretty nice. Like, it's like... Almost like a closed community kind of feel when you drive in there. There's like no cars there. Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, I know my name is Brandon, but I'm, when you hear it on here, my name is Brendan. Brendan. <laughs> Brendan. Brendan. <laughs> Little beans over here, and he points. He's like, "Is he talking about you?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm Brendan." <laughs> and Tony's looking right now. Like, He's not laughing. My accent again. <laughs> I love you, Tony. Uh, what are you drinking? Because I've got the sugar-free. What are you drinking? Ah, sugar-free. I've yeah. never had that one. What is it? This is the orange one. It's the sugar -free. Oh, no shit, but what what flavor? Because I can't see like, it. I'll try some like green. Oh, okay. But this is not the best one. one. The green one is the best one. Okay, I'll look for those. The green one the tastes one like... Is, the best gel. one is the, uh, the orange juice is the best one. <laughs> this one is speci specifically made made for Hashimoto because the whole thing tastes like orange. So oh, if you can't taste it. orange, you take a yeah, sip of yeah, this yeah. and then you smoke, you gotta taste orange every time. <laughs> <laughs> Not drink that, he still won't taste the orange. <laughs> and and it has M for Matt on the on the front of that drink. <laughs> uh Tony, where did you get my hat? Your hat? Uh, my I get my hat from a store called Goran Brothers. Actually, Goran Brothers. Uh, right, green has the best flavor. Green, green is the best. They have a new one that's purple, and that oh not 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 like purple. Uh, it's a sea foam, like a dark sea foam color. That one that one's is. Great. That one is passion fruit flavor. It's great. Nasty. Passion fruit flavor. I don't know if we're talking about the same one. It's really dark, dark sea foam color. Yeah. It's yeah, it has like a texture. Uh, has like a texture to it. They all have texture to it. Yeah, do. <laughs> they all have texture yeah. to it. So all the sugar-free ones have texture. The other yeah. ones don't. But when you're on a keto diet, all you drink is sugar-free. <laughs> keto diet. Oh, dude, I do need a slice of pizza now. You know, <laughs> have you eat a keto pizza? It will knock you to sleep yeah. right there, right on the spot. It has so much fat in it, it just knock you to sleep. Serious, try one. Next time, go go to find uh, find find people that's gonna make you a keto pizza, or you can come over. I'll make you one. It's just it's literally the whole thing is made out of mozzarella. <laughs> Jesus. Well, don't be like those intolerant if you're gonna try that. Yeah, the whole thing is mozzarella and ca cauliflower, and uh, and you know toppings. That's it. Oh. Uh... Uh, I think so. It's called um, Ultra Fiesta. <laughs> hey, Martin. Hell yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with pizza? Right you know, I'm, oh, I'm, when you're on keto, you can eat pizza. You, you just can't, can't eat the crust. Heart. I can't eat it once a week. Not well, the crust. Uh, yeah. Yes. Like In fact, I, yeah. I have I do two and a half two and a half day cheat days. I start my cheat day on Friday afternoon, and then I eat it all the way to Sunday night. Oh, it's so good too. <laughs> Fuck, it looks good. You have so, to, you have to confuse day, your, you have to confuse your body a little bit to to get more out of your body. So you know, a lot. I I will just low out the carb, 
on, on <clears> Friday <throat> night all the way through Sunday and then suffer through uh, Monday through Thursday and that's that's how your body's gotta work you know it's kind of confusing if it's always high or always low then it's, mm. it's not gonna do well it's not gonna do well so Tony you remember that um, mm. that thing I was talking about where I had like a breakout skin breakout mm -hmm. keto rash so I was on um, <laughs> I was off of keto for about 10 days <laughs> and, to uh, um, I um, mm. so I had that breakout <laughs> Um, I thought it was psoriasis that had broken out. So I go to the doctor, and apparently it was shingles. Oh, shit. Yeah. Damn, bro. Yeah. You sure it's shingles? shingles? Yeah. Doctor looked at it. He said, oh, that's shingles. And then? Right away. So. Aren't you too young, I man? Mean, yeah. I know. And he thought that, too. He's like, yeah, you're kind of too young to have shingles. Um, but no, he basically said that um, I mean, I thought it was because my bas basically when I got off of keto, my body was resetting. So the carbs just kind of flooded my system and then just kind of made me all fucked up. But um, mm -hmm. he said, no, it was just um, a weird reaction. Oh, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to I'm just going to stay on keto. And it looks like it's already going away after just two days of being on keto again. You know, I've never mm. got shingles out of keto. I think some people does. And then there's, you know, if you if you search online, you're going to find a lot of those. Is it keto rash or is it just shingle one? That you will find those. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, there yeah. You go. New button. Is that a new button? New button. There you go. Hey, look at that hat in the background. <laughs> Best hat in the world, right there. My buddy got this for me. For you know, I'm right getting now. a little bit of black tea on this cigar too. Yeah. Oh yeah. What the hell? You see okay. that? Yeah. What? Yeah. Well, I'll just wear it backwards so I don't offend anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no politics. <laughs> you know, I have no problem with that, but you know, it, it is pretty cool if you can cure from uh, COVID-19 in three days. In three days, kind of amazing. Uh huh. It's pretty good, huh? It's pretty good, except nobody can afford the treatment, so that's okay. Sorry. Right. Better than forty-seven years of dementia. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Hey, I did hear the news though that America is getting ready to recognize Taiwan as a country. And no, that news came. On. That news came out, right? Uh, Chinese uh, president decided to go to to their Marines and say, "Get ready to war." <laughs> Wait, I didn't know. I didn't know that Taiwan was a country. I thought it was just a manufacturing plant. <laughs> Even if it's just That's a manufacturing everybody... place, it's still a country. No, it's just, it's a manufacturing plant inside of another country. That's why everything says. Made in Taiwan on it. No, nothing says made in Taiwan right now. Everything says made in China right now. I know. Seriously. I thought that's where the manufacturing plant was. was in China. It was just called Taiwan Manufacturing Plant. Okay. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were more educated than that, but that's okay. You know. <laughs> You know, <laughs> World War Two, U.S. went out of the, went out of their way to bomb Japan because they want to save a manufacturing plant. World War Two wasn't real, man. It was. It was all made up I, like I know, I know. Man. Imagination, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an internet hoax. <laughs> yeah, it was an internet hoax that was done in a Hollywood studio, kind of like uh, you know the moon landing. Mm hmm. You know, just because thanks to that whole imagination, we get like Memorial Days and stuff. It's great. Oh, we got holidays out of it. Yes, I did have Kavalan Taiwan whiskey. Kavalan Taiwan whiskey is actually very special because the geography is where, where it was made. You can age whiskey in Taiwan for four years and you'll taste like a whiskey that's aged for eight years. Because where, where so, it is. 
So those eggs that we ate, did they age those for 50 years so they taste like they've been aging for 100? No, 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 no. Those are, they, you, you age them about a few months. <laughs> you age them about a few months. But anyways, yes, Cavallon is really, really good whiskey. So I collect those, actually. Those are pretty good. <coughs> Okay, yeah. so Brenda, are you late for your for your um, Bible study? I'm about five minutes. Yeah, about five minutes. Cool, cool, cool. Just wanna be wary of your time. You don't wanna make your boys waiting. You know. <laughs> they can survive without me. Can they? Can they? We couldn't survive without you. So. Not a lot of people, um, really, just not a lot. And and I I'm, I also want to inform everybody that I'm a very humble person. Um, I find that if I don't inform people that I'm humble, you just don't know it. So I've got to make sure everybody knows that I'm extremely humble. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to get ready to puke just in case. I I know, keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> No, I, no, I, I think that's uh, yeah, we got, I got about five, ten minutes until we get going. We start at seven. Yeah, whatever that time is. Ah, uh, well, it's a couple hours, three hours behind you, so it changes because you guys don't have daylight saving at all. So, <laughs> yeah, we don't play that game, and I agree with it. And I agree with it. You know, in like in Asia, we never had daylight saving. I don't know what that is. It doesn't change anything for me. Nobody uses that the difference anymore. Like you know, which farmer still uses daylight saving? I don't know. It seems like you want more daylight, get up earlier. You want more daylight, get up earlier. That's it. Right? It doesn't change anything. I think, I think Matt's watching SpongeBob. <laughs> Matt is trying to search for that post right now on Shadow Smoke Legion hashtag. <laughs> so, you know, he's too busy scrolling through. So, yeah, October right now, halfway through. Um, I think I might still have the show on Saturday because my birthday is on Sunday and we probably just spend Saturday to go buy a cake and then celebrate on Sunday instead, instead of Saturday night. So I should be able to have a show on Saturday night. You're going to be 200, right? Mm. 151 10 times over <laughs> I like it yeah right so I am getting old uh, just 2020 is making me older 2020 <laughs> is making me older literally everything is crap uh, but I mean I got news for you we're all getting older how unfortunate I feel sorry for you if you, you show me one person that's getting younger Benjamin Benjamin Button? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't he? No. It's a fictional character. Still a person. Did you say still a virgin? Person. Person. Oh. The hell? Get your mind out of that gutter. Seriously. I was like, oh. what does a person's sex life have anything to do with getting older or younger? <clears throat> you know, back in the day, the Chinese Taoism believed. Nah, never mind. Let's not go there. All right, here we go. Here we go. Well, Hold on. Yeah, everybody still thinks that my wife is younger than I am. No, I I think I think she's older by like a couple of years. Yeah. Two years. I think but yeah, everybody so they look at her and they think that she's younger than me. There is no way <laughs> that I would know, agree with that. I, I you know, I can tell right away Martin like woman that's older than him because she he likes to be you know, put into uh -huh. the place. So he had to find someone <laughs> yeah. older and wiser and just put him into his place every day. Every day. So. He, wants, he wants to get hit over the head with a chunkla. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So. Right, Martin? No. <laughs> oh, man. Come on, you can tell Martin's right happy. No, he wouldn't have gotten married watching. if he wasn't happy, right? He's happy, so. <laughs> no? No? It... I'm happy. That should be, you know. What do you mean? Matt's happy. I mean, you can tell. Matt's like, I'm so happy. No one's ever going to see my wife. All you got to see is my naked top. <laughs> Topless going, you know, and going like, ah, ah, ah. It's so 
don't need the soy sauce assassin. Matt's always happy on my butt. Martina my review. Soy sauce. Yeah, Matt. Hashimoto and Daniel Martin. Hi. Hi. Arigato. This is the guy. This is the guy I made the button out of his face. That's him. And he and he can't taste orange in the Laranja. He's dead in the mouth. Ah. Oh my god. <laughs> did you just see this? You guys see this? I'm not showing my face after that one. Everybody, did you guys see this? I don't want to right, be marked. Right after yeah. he say he's dead in the mouth and then Brendan bribe him with a cigar. He's like, good job, right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, he came in asking one. He came in asking for Connecticut. Yeah, it, this is rehearsed. I'm pretty sure this is rehearsed. Like, hey, come back in like 20 minutes and say that, you know, not tasting orange is dating no, I'll, I'll give you a cigar. Wait, grab the bottle's awesome. Oh, dang. Did you hear that? You hear that, Tony? Hear what did he say? Did he say something about Davidoff is awesome? No. No, no Davidoff is overpriced and not enough taste. Oh, shit. I don't know. Shots fired. Is... Somebody put the gun down. Davidoff's what? It's pocket change. Here, come in here, come in here, my friend. Come in here, my friend. Come yeah, let me Moses. Just look like. Come say hi, Moses. Hello, Ellis. How's it going? <laughs> How's it going, gentlemen? Good. Just having fun on a Wednesday night, of course. What's this about uh, Davidoff being a good, thinking, good cigar? This? Come on, everybody have their cigars, uh, you know, what they like and stuff like that. It doesn't really matter. Well, if you're going to say it so politely, I'm going to really agree with you then. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep over here, but when you're so kind about it, I'm the fucking idiot over here. Yeah, <laughs> there are good well, cigars and good price for everybody, right? Some and and Grand Habano is good. Spend... I didn't say Grand Habano. Yeah, you know, so, yeah, some people have the income that they can spend 30 to $40 a stick, and you got people like me that don't do enough yards. That I'm buying quorums and never mind. <laughs> so remember when I told you guys I had a landscaper? <laughs> He's like, you gave him all my secrets? <laughs> Charge you five dollars more. Yeah, Martin does. Martin? What's up? I know, right? <laughs> yeah. I tell you, man, here in Arizona, they throw their white privilege card everywhere, man. <laughs> just because we like to do what we do. This guy <laughs> doesn't know our roots, man. Hey, I actually got written up when I was working for a school district because I was asking everybody if they knew somebody else trying to build the block wall back here. And I was asking, did I literally ask everybody, do you know somebody that does block walls? And I went to the one Mexican guy, Josue, and I asked him, and I got written up for racist comments because I asked him if he knew somebody that did block walls. <laughs> You're white. Really? But you know what's funny? Yeah, yeah. Like, but hold on. Here's a funny thing. He responded with, well, I do, but he got deported. <laughs> wow. Really? Okay. Never mind. But how, wait, wait, who's, writing, who's writing you up, though? Who's writing you up? <laughs> who's just like... Oh yeah. yeah. Huh? Wait, the police officer can go write you up for being uh, have racist comments? No, I got written up. No, I got written up. Like they they tried to write me up for they tried to fire me over it. Oh, I, I, in a job. This is yeah. This is one of the few times I worked for somebody, and one of the many times I realized I'm a terrible employee. Yeah. I don't know if you can be written up for that because that's passive aggressive for saying that you cannot say that. Well, when you work for the government, they can write you up for whatever they want to write you up for because they're a bunch of assholes and it's all bureaucratic What's bullshit all over here. So those are comments from people that are watching this on YouTube. Are we live? Yes. yes. We are. He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got a fucking war in this egg. Oh, hey, oh, hey Ron, shit. Uh, ice is on me. <laughs> <laughs> Mika, get the family ready. We're moving the <laughs> Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh my god, that's good. <laughs> Don't worry, nobody watches it anyways. 
Yeah. It's like it's like that show Down to the Nub that's live on Sundays at 3 p.m. Pacific. Nobody watches it anyways. Oh, okay. That's yeah. one. Yeah, right. That's one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in, in a minute, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that uh, that epic see that's the thing right like i i dealt with so much bullshit through the week that i'm actually like i'm not in the mood to argue <laughs> let's just go with agree with disagree okay that that's fine i'm okay with that <laughs> <laughs> like when you deal with that much bullshit you're like yeah, okay you win that's fine whatever you, you can say whatever you want <laughs> So that guy, uh, he he is a manager for one of the stores out here, Stag Tobacco, and they have they actually have three locations and they have a Davidoff account, and so he's got experience with um, you know overpriced and underflavored cigars being. Can know, he Davidoff. even say that though? He's like, I have a Davidoff account. We gotta come out and say Davidoff is overpriced. That doesn't stop people like you from buying it. Doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't stop people. You know, come on. Everybody knows good guys crap and doesn't stop people from buying it. Yeah. Yeah, they just have shitty pallets. Right? So. This you know, has hey. four times the amount of viewers than DTTM I has. Say, the best doubt off that I've got that I've smoked was the Anniversario in the Perfecto. That was a damn good cigar. Wine and Dynam 690. Yeah, that's the trope. <laughs> This has at least four times the amount of viewers at D. What's DTTN? Down to the knob. Oh, that's a great show. I heard all about that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know his own damn acronym. What the fuck? Yeah, what? <laughs> that's two. <laughs> called lobbying it up, inviting somebody. <laughs> Sammy's the t- house. Yeah. Hey, Sammy. What's going on, man? It's not even show. Sure. Okay, so. Yeah, I mean that was uh, that was fun. That that's pretty good. You know, I have to say, Brendan does know a lot of fun people. He knows a lot of assholes too, but he knows a lot of fun people. Well, because he is one. Yeah. I mean, I he's not gonna deny actually... that. He that's totally true. So, completely true. Yeah, my he... wife actually got me this keychain for my birthday at one point. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it says you're my favorite asshole on it. I see. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's a keychain or a dog tag. I'm not I'm quite I'm sure. Yet. My wife is a kind of one, man. She got me that all the time. Once you got your collar, yeah. then you have it, yeah. Well, it was a, it, it came attached to a leather collar. Uh, but uh, we're not talking about that. Wait, wait. Um... <laughs> so you wear a collar? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Only for you, Martin. So Down to the Knob is going to have the guest of the year this Sunday. Who is that? Daryl, what's up, brother? Oh, Bob, uh, is Bob, is it Bob this week? Because yeah, yeah, yeah this weekend. Time. Yeah, this Sunday we'll have Bob the Cigar Guy live with us. Uh, and I've got some, <laughs> I, I, I got some. Uh, I know I, I didn't say where. Um, I, I, it's not three, Martin, because I didn't say that it was on Down to the Nub Sunday at three p.m. live on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> um, that would have been three if I would have said that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Bob the Cigar Guy, we had Chief last week, Bob the Cigar Guy this week, and then we've got some really cool people lined up um, that are that are coming up that I got to recently meet, and uh, there are going to be some cool guys outside of the industry. Cool. I mean, uh, just so that, yeah, now that you know, when you watch Down to the Knob this weekend, keep your speaker down. <clears throat> First three seconds. Yeah. Bam! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, not on ours. Like at least ours is gonna have an intro, so you have time to turn down your speakers. That intro, that intro, from like two weeks ago was the best. Like the best you have ever done. <laughs> the best you have ever done. I laughed. So I rewatched that one so many times. The best you ever done is that one. Hands down. Yeah, we've been we've been messing up lately a little bit, and I love it. Well, because you don't script them. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, we had the one, and a lot of people got off early, but it was, it was a couple shows ago on Sunday when when we were doing the live. Usually, you know, we when we're doing that on the Streamyard, we you do the the outro, right, the credits, and then you gotta you gotta cut, you know, you still gotta be aware, and you gotta cut it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, 
Tim got distracted. He's the one that does that end of it. I do all the other production. And Tim got distracted. And we're uh, Carson Serino. And then Carson's like, uh, are we still alive? Like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that good. one was interesting. Life I always have those, you know. So it's good. So uh, coming back to this cigar that I just smoked. You finished it's it already? Okay cigar. It's okay cigar. Uh, not particularly different, but I did taste black tea in this one halfway through it, so it's kind of different. But it's not. It doesn't stay long. Doesn't stay long. Maybe because of the size too little. So. You know who you haven't had on your show? Martina Maya? Yeah, Martina Maya Cigar Reviews. Ah, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> That's two, right? That's two. That's two. So. Well, I, I was considering reaching out to him, uh, but I was trying to find one of the cigar brands that I represent that he would actually enjoy smoking <laughs> on the show. And I'm having a difficult time finding that. <laughs> you just had to go outside your box. Or, 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 you know, you had to go pick up some more brand. Yeah, right? You, I, I know you got space now. Go pick up another brand. Yeah, I don't have space now. I, I don't have space. Uh, I, I had another brand. I had another brand just reach out to me, and uh, I, I don't have space. And he Dude, offered me pretty much a twelve states. Rockefeller? No. 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 So what and, we have? And I can I, I can share it, and I'll share the whole story behind it. Uh, but not while we're live on YouTube. That's that's uh, that can't happen. Fine, that's fine. That's fine. After show. So I am going to smoke this uh, Nat Sherman. NYC. Which one? Timeless. I don't think this is no. This is not timeless because I think timeless. It says timeless all around it, right? So this wasn't timeless. This is just a NYC nineteen thirty. Let me see if there's anything on this. No, it is timeless. You're right. Come on, the man. You're, you're timeless questioning me? The timeless on it, right? You're questioning me? No, I think the... Ooh, yeah, hello. Hello. You're <laughs> I'm blurry as hell. There we go. So, I, I think the TAA one with timeless, he says timeless with Nat, Nat Sherman is. But there was one that says timeless right hmm. around it. So, I didn't think yeah. it was timeless. <clears throat> but this is timeless 556. Five, you're right. I found it in the bottom of my humidor, and I'm gonna smoke it. It's a weird ass box press. Well, you won't get to smoke that very much more. Yeah, because they're gone. Yep. Which I am not too sad about, because I don't, I don't like, I don't like a lot of these cigars. I think they're okay, but you know, for the price and you know, and the memory, how cocky they are when I walk into their store, I really don't like to smoke their cigars. How what? If you ever walk into a Nat Sherman place, everybody in there is such a snobby asshole. Yeah, but what sucks is that that lounge is going away because that was a really, really cool lounge. I never got to go. It is, but it's just empty. It's just empty. You walk in there, everything yeah. looks pretty grand. It looks similar to the atmosphere of uh, the Carnegie Club. But they have two shelf, like two, like you know, those glass table with all those things, and they have one little room for the humidor. That's it. And I think the second floor, you need like uh, like VIP to go up there or something like that. You need to pay to smoke upstairs. And that was yeah. it. Everybody in there are snobby. Like, they they, they they don't care. They're like, everybody's royalties in there or something like that. So I didn't like the atmosphere. I think they close at the end of uh, November, right? I don't know when they're... Oh, they're done. Are they all done? They yeah. Yeah, they had it on Facebook. Oh, wow. Wow. Or uh, Instagram or something. They were packing up and taking everything out. So what about those people wow. who pay the membership fee? <laughs> I guess they can't smoke there. Right? Right. They pay the membership <laughs> fee. I don't know if there's a member's box, too, that you had to pay the fees for. I don't know what happened to us. <clears throat> I don't know. All right, dude. I got to get going, guys. All right. Talk to you later, All man. Right. Thanks for uh, right, being here. All right. Later. Thank you guys for having me on. Love y'all. So yeah, Nat Sherman is definitely not a place to go if you're not a royalty, if you didn't have uh, like an African prince, Niger Nigerian prince give you $2 million, 
you don't want to be in there. You know, once you walk in there, it looks it looks impressive. But once you walk one round, you're like, okay, that's it. There's not much to it. You know, it will happen much more amazing if they have the whole wall for the cigars and stuff like that. They have one tiny room. <clears throat> the room is so tiny, you can probably fit without that table in the center, 15, 20 people max standing right next to each other. It's not that big. So, hey, shut up. It's not that big. But yeah, right now, how, how many of you have been going to the brick and mortars? I haven't, I haven't go to one in Massachusetts yet. I don't think they're open, really. People say they're open, but I don't think they're open. So I, I didn't try to go yet. Have you guys been to any of the, the your locals? No. What was that? Oh, Matt yeah, will never yeah, go to his wasn't... locals. So <laughs> Matt never goes to his locals. Yeah. What were you saying? Oh, I missed it. Uh, the local shops. Yeah, I frequent one, and then I go to the other one, like just to pick up cigars. So uh, Stacy haven't been picking up her uh, Davidoff lately. You know, we're still waiting for her two Yamasa challenge. <laughs> no? And that Yamasa put her on her butt. Well, if I have, she had two, you wouldn't put her on her butt. <laughs> yeah, it would knock her out. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, whenever I smoke Night Sherman's, it's just not that impressive. It's still a cigar, right? It's still got yeah. flavor. But it's just like it's very heavy. They're like all, all I think all of Nat Sherman's cigar feels like a full body cigar. I've only had one, and it was a Connecticut, and it was very, very mild. Very, very mild. Yeah. I had uh, they're like really short Connecticut, like this bit, about this much, uh, and that was that kicks ass. That one kicks ass. It's Connecticut, but it's like medium plus. It's crazy. Let's see. I'm sure I got a photo of it. I don't remember which one it was. So, but yeah, uh, I am looking forward for all the stuff from Amazon to get here so I can be starting to put some more lights in this room. My basement is super dark. My basement has lights, but it's super dark. And I don't know why. It's just, you know, when you have one light, but then the room is like extended long and the run one light is like a dome, you really don't get all the light. So I wanted to put more lights in there, but I want to make sure to get those like uh, like a gaming light, so that it's like rotates color, rotates color all the time, so I can feel like a like a gamer, professional gamer, but I don't game. <laughs> professional gamer that doesn't game. It's cool. I have not I have not if seen Matt online playing any game though. I think I added you on face on. on, on Xbox or something like that, but I haven't seen you on ever. <laughs> yeah, I don't get on very often. Uh, so Wednesday, oh yeah, people ask whether or not we gotta have our Christmas show as usual. We should, right? We gotta have our Christmas show. Yeah. Uh, of course, I will make sure to get enough drinks uh, and get enough cigars for that day. <laughs> Hopefully we'll not go over like last time was pretty quick, right? Did we? What, what? How many hours did we do last time? Three hours. Three hours, I think. Yeah, three hours, four, maybe. What a four! It was long. Yeah, it was like four hours. We had to do it quicker, and that's like you not know, one after another too. It's like crazy. That's the one I smoked. It's a Nat Sherman Post or Post or some shit. I have not smoked that one before. The Matt Sherman I talked about, very short, has a has a silver band on it, silver gray color band. Hey Evan. So like I took like few puff on this, I can already feel it. This is really heavy, really heavy. But you know I figure cigar sitting there, might as well smoke it, kind of thing. But yeah, we, we will still do our Christmas show. Uh, in turn of the coins, all right. Since we talked about this, and Michael prefers for me to send it out, we will do it this way, okay? I will get it as pre-order. I will send it out, but this time we'll get it with a, uh, the coin protector on it, rather than just the sleeve. 
because I know uh, a lot of you tried to look for covers and couldn't find it. And those covers are usually expensive. They're like four or five dollars if you just go buy on Amazon. So it wouldn't make sense, right? If I just get it from through them, they package it, send it to me, it costs about like a dollar. It's not a big deal. So, and that's why I asked you guys if you guys prefer to have the protector on it, round already on there, because it will be much cheaper if I just get it for you guys rather than you, you go into Amazon and get your own. I, I'm okay either way, but I when I look at Amazon, there isn't a lot that a lot of them that covers two inches diameter. So Daniel just laughed and he's like thinking about something else. <laughs> I think there was only a couple, and then they were like five to ten dollars for two or something like that. It's it's crazy amount. So I figure why not just get the right with the right, right sizing. I'll just send it out. Uh, in terms of when we got to start producing them, I am thinking about late, mid to late November because it takes a few weeks and I want to get it to your hand before our uh, anniversary show, uh, which will be on. Let me see what that day is going to be. Boom, 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 boom. We can do it on January 9th. January 9th. That's a Saturday. So we can do that show on that day. Another year. This year kind of flew by. Do you guys feel that? That the first year feel long, right? The first year feel, feel crazy long. Every uh, every so often we'll have something happening because that and then I kind of feel busy. This year I feel like because we spend all our, our time in show chatting, it feel like the uh, the the time just shortened. Like it, it, before you know it, it's almost November. It's like halfway through October, right? Which, which also means the cutter is coming very soon. The cutter is coming around the same time. All right. So what I will do is I will take, um, I'll put up the pre-order for uh, around mid to mid to late November. We'll have it produced. I'll ask them how long it will take to produce because uh, you know, COVID-19, everything takes longer. So I asked them how long to take for dues and I, I'll, I'll try to make sure that we can get it out beforehand and um, that way everybody can receive it before the anniversary and we all have our, in, our second year anniversary coin uh, in place. And by then, before Christmas, you should already have the cutter. The cutter. And... Uh, other than that, I don't think there's anything else we're working on for the rest of the year. Right? There's nothing we're working on for the rest of the year. So, that, the rest of the year, <clears throat> the next thing that's going to happen is the Christmas show. Well, no, actually, we still have Secret Santa, right? I'll, you guys want to play Secret Santa this year? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. yeah, we can do Secret Santa. I need to find out where the, 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 the international train is at. I haven't heard uh, any movement on that, so I think we need to look into it. Tony is a cut about. Okay. <laughs> Take that as a compliment. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll do the we, we'll do the secret Santa, and uh, the rule will be the same thing. You can send whatever; it doesn't have to be cigars. Like, I think some people feel like they have to send cigars, but no, you can send anything. In fact, uh, I, I think uh, from Michael, you know, we all got our soap on the rope. <laughs> that wasn't a cigar for sure, right? So we have those. And I can't think of anything that else that we should prep for. We should prep for, right? And then next year, we'll, we will do our anniversary show. And from that point on, just like this year, we'll focus on the event cigar for the first few months. I think that's that's around time that we need to we need to look into it. And uh, by probably March, between March and June, between March and June, we'll start we'll start doing the uh, the swag kit pre-order, the swag kit pre-order. So. Uh, all the swag thing for the events and I and like I said before even if you can't go to the event you can still purchase the swag that help to produce the swag because a 
I can't produce swag with only 99. Hey, can you p produce 20 sets of these? Yeah, we could, but we'll charge you 400, I mean, 400 times the cost. Oh, shit, we got swag? <laughs> so I am thinking the sweat kit what? will include will include the new glass. Obviously, uh, I had the logo adjusted. See, this is why I need to have a demo made first to know whether or not we can even do it, right? We will include a glass. We will include sticker. We will include. Um, Probably, I don't know, something else. Uh, maybe t-shirts. I think if, since we're doing pre-order, I can actually order the exact right amount of t-shirt and the sizings, and I can actually do that. Rather than having you guys to order those, I can have them all together. And it's probably easier to ship if I can wrap the, the, the cup inside the t-shirt and send it out like that. Because if you guys receive the cup, you guys know that you know that thing is impossible to ship. <laughs> I always feel like it's gonna break, and we all know how you you know your USPS is like. It's like, hey, glass, let's try to pound it to see what happens, you know. So we'll do T-shirts, we'll do cup, we'll do uh, stickers, we will do Hashimoto Hashimoto buttons. Maybe more Hashimoto buttons. Yeah, we'll do a specialized one so everybody who goes to Hashimoto can wear one, right? Because we're Special going to do it in Hashimoto's place, so everybody wear one as like an entrance, like a VIP walk in there. It's like, do you have a button? No, and get out. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we can and just take this topless picture and make it look like he has SSL uh, 2021 tattooed on his chest or... uh, yeah right like, like on, this Daniel. like that shadow <laughs> smokers legion like this we can do that you know so Matt just have to post speaking of that and now get a I get an artist to, speaking to, of that. to alter it and uh is it finalized at Matt's place I'm leaning towards at Matt's place because New York, I can't find a place right now. Right? New York, the, the other option was uh, at uh, Meadow's place. Matt Meadow. Uh, then he said he had like a front yard that we can do it at. But in all seriousness, I think overall it would be easier if we do at Matt's place because it makes it easier for everybody else to travel there. Uh, you know, Matia Maya. Uh, Brendan, mm, Luis Cuevas, if he's going, um, and and it will be easier if I just ship all the stuff to 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 to, to Michael, and he can just drive it up because I'm not gonna be able to carry all that on the airplane, right? So, and then we'll leave some budget to pitch in for Matt's to order food because we need food, right? So why are we ordering? Uh, I don't know why we gotta eat at, at Mets, but Matt, are you doing barbecue for us? Why are you doing, uh, you know, pizza? <laughs> Matt's totally frozen. He's like, I'm not. I can't answer that right now. I, I, somebody take a <laughs> new button. I think I think it will be fun to do at Matt's place. I mean, yeah, we could raid his uh, humor. He will lock his humor door and have guns in front of it. You know, playing some like you know, uh, claymores in front of it. <laughs> right? Yeah, right, buddy. So, uh, yeah, we, we will save up. Uh, Speaking. Call that budget for food. You know, we can cater. You know, if Matt can look in that, look up some catering or uh, he can barbecue there. Speaking of what happened last Saturday, I won't be on this Saturday. Uh-oh. <laughs> Why? Because you're planning to drink. Well, yeah, we gotta. We're doing a Halloween party here at our house, so I'll probably be a little tipsy then too. Okay, that's totally fine. So yeah, we'll, we'll do that. You know, I my goal is to be there and then just take take a ride on all Matt's car. Like you know, I'm just drive one after another out and back. We'll drag straight. Uh, drag drag race in front of his house. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! 
Oh, Maybe we, we could on that top one with his neck up. We can just put SSL 2021 right on his neck. Make it look like a tattoo. <laughs> Oh my god. That's perfect. That, oh my god. In case everybody forgot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the real question is what are you dressing up as Saturday? Yeah. Oh yeah. What are you dressing up as? Uh, uh, I don't know if you guys know who uh, Creeper oh, uh, from Cholo Fit. Who? <laughs> what you broke up? I didn't hear it. Creeper from Creeper from Cholos. Don't know who that is. Creeper from Cholos. Cholo fit. Creeper. Creeper. I don't know who that is. Yeah. But yeah. Look it up, man. Creepers. I'll look it up. Just creeper. Creeper. <laughs> what the hell? That's definitely not it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! You gotta dress up as Travis. Because <laughs> that looks like Travis to me. Right. <laughs> oh my god! That wife beater. Yeah, that looks like Travis. <laughs> Shave. You got you guys gotta watch that guy. He is so oh, yeah. hilarious. Yeah, he's funny. But yeah, so Yeah, Matt, you good that we good with that, right? If we do end up going to your place, you're good? I don't wanna peer pressure yeah, you or anything. Yeah, I'm I'm good. And I don't wanna peer pressure you. No. No, I told my wife and she's down for it too, so Yeah, so we we just do all that stuff. We hang out over there, and then we fly out the next day with our mask and shit. It'll be too cold over there, though, in September. <laughs> it's going to be cold in September. You know, we, we you know, with that many people gathering, we well, can maybe make his you. backyard a chimney. You know, his neighbor will be like, what the hell is happening next door? You know? Yep. Is there a fire over there? All yeah, that smoke? Call 911. <laughs> fire department. I think that would be fun. I think that would be fun. Yeah, compared to doing it in New York, uh, because before there's a lot of places that we can kind of go for New York. But the more I consider, it's like, hey, because we got to have our own cigars and, and you know, different, you know, Luis Cueva, who represents Casa Cueva, to be there. I don't think it's good to do in any cigar lounges because none of them carries, you know, Casa Cueva. So it would be kind of like weird. Uh, especially they have Davidoff people over there is hoping that you'll get some Davidoff while Louis Cueva will be like, hey, try, you know, have more of these Legion cigars, you know, that will be a problem, right? I, I think that will be a problem. So, you know, by doing it this way, that will be much easier, I think, overall. And, you know, like I say, uh, we, we'll figure out what we got to eat and drink at the time. We, we, we'll just figure it out. We'll have Matt drive his gigantic truck to get drinks. <laughs> and then you know make sure everybody's situated you know and and i here's the best thing if you're drunk there matt's strong enough to carry you around <laughs> so <laughs> dump it dump you over his yard on the back you know so i think that'll be cool uh to to hang out over there and then that will count as my travel to one of the member place uh of the year you know, that that would be pretty fun. Well, I get to see Matt again here in a few weeks. Yep. Joey Bell Buttons is the black sweatshirt awake. Yes, he's definitely most likely awake. Yep, he's awake. He's, he's barely awake. awake. He's awake. He's just quiet. He's awake. He's awake. Don't worry. Heck yeah. See? <laughs> he's never yawning, though. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it is pretty late, you know, for, for Wednesday. I mean, it, it's a work day, right? It's a work day. So for everybody to have time to come up here, it's, it's pretty late. Well, well, I'm a full-time YouTuber, so. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> full-time YouTuber. You know, for, for a lot of YouTubers, right, they play this character. We don't play this character. We just, like, we're an asshole anyway, right? Yeah. 
So, you know, Martin's the way he is. I'm the way I am. You know, we yep. don't play this character. My wife loves to watch a lot of the different YouTubers, uh, especially this uh, one channel called... Should I advertise? I shouldn't even advertise. No, it, it's, it's between two, a guy and a woman, right? And they, they go around to talk about local culture and food and stuff like that. And they recently broke up, right? And the guy started to upload video about, like, uh, you know, tranquilism, you know, about mental healthness, about uh, uh, meditation and stuff like that. So right? it's true. Yeah. Huh? Oh, they lost 10,000 subscribers in one day. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. So my wife was like, we think he's crazy. I was like, no. Now, what you're watching is literally someone play a character and they're sick and tired of that character. They're going back to who they are. They're from Connecticut. Uh, not Connecticut. Uh, Canada. They're from Canada. And he went back to Canada after all that stuff. You know, he can't travel anywhere now. So he went back to Canada. And he's totally a different person. I was like, it's not that he changed who he is. It's just that he actually revert to who he was. You know, there's a lot of us. Like, like if you were to meet me in person, I mean, you get me on YouTube. I mean, I'm the same person. Right, right. Matt? And, and Well, that's what me and Martin were talking about last or a couple days ago. I was like, Sir Martin, because he's this big YouTube dude, man. I was like. I didn't know what to expect, you know, but Martin is the same dude in, through and through, man. It was cool. The things that not only we do on the YouTube show, we have after chat and we chat with each other all the time. And th th there's mm -hmm. no way you can act a character for that long after. If you hear the topic that's in the after chat, you will know that there's no way to hold a straight face. Okay. <laughs> Majority of the time. So, you know, whatever you see here is Martin, you know, and... and Whatever you see here is Matt. Whatever you see here is Daniel. Whatever you see, uh, you know, Brendan, Sigam McKinney, he, you know, he's like an asshole and he really is an asshole <laughs> in real life, right? It's me the way it is. This is how I am. So, you know, I, when I travel over the hangout, Brendan, it's the same way. It's the same way. But then I, a lot of characters, you know, this, this is one of those things that if you see on the internet, it doesn't mean to be, it's true. You know, my wife watches a lot of fashion bloggers who are like, <coughs> They, they portray themselves in, as a, like a billionaire. Right? They, they, uh, they show like this new bag I bought you know, by like, like, like $10,000, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like this new car I buy for my boyfriend. And they eventually, you know, there will be news leaking out to say, hey, you know, they actually rented those cars or they actually rented the house to film and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, even when you watch, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, the, 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 the Kardashian, Keep Up with Kardashian, they don't film in their own house. That place is rental. That's not their house. They have to dress up, make up, and everything, and go there and film. And you think that people dressing suit to to go out every single day, in a ninety degree, hundred degree weather? No. Okay. They, you know they're always dressed up. There's no way everybody's gonna dress up all day in that kind of weather, walking to eat uh, a taco. You know, are you gonna wear? You think someone's gonna wear their two thousand dollars suit to just eat a taco? You know, I will say though, I like um. I don't know if you guys watch him. His name is Jeremy Sires. He's got his own like smoke room where he keeps all his whiskeys and his cigars. It's pretty badass. But it's his own you. house. He's a cool dude, man. Yeah, you know, I, I just feel like even though we do stage, right? And again, I try to put a corner where I can film. You try to do, to do it in your um, backyard. Wherever, like stage, wherever. Yeah, just staging. <laughs> Staging, sure, because we don't want uh, everybody to see our nasty places on <laughs> the rest of the, the house. Yeah, it's like my backyard. I want you guys to in my backyard. YouTube people <laughs> has specific studios where they can film it. They have studios that they film it, and then they portray themselves a certain way. So people need to know no, that. No, I've noticed, though, every time I change locations, I have, like, it's like a mental thing where I can't get into my space where I'm myself. I don't know if it's just me or what because like I, I used to shoot right, right here in front of my wall I used to shoot in front of my car but anytime I got out of that space I'm like uh okay how do I act what do I say I'm like lost for words it's true when, when you're not in a familiar <laughs> environment that does happen so Raymond Ramos says I missed the review in the Mazda I don't think he have done yeah. it in the, uh, oh yeah oh no no back in the day not, not the current Mazda yeah I'm um, and uh, yeah, I uh, we sold the Mazda. We got an Infinity, so I can't smoke in the Infinity. You still have a Mazda? I, I got another Mazda. Yeah. 
So, you know, yeah, I, I've, been, the, uh... I've been very actively trying to shop for another car, but just, just none of those cars I'm looking at really attracts me. I mean, I look at the MA over and over again, and in the end, just like MA is not that good of a car. You know, it doesn't have a lot of stuff in there that I want. It's just, it feels weird. It feels different. I look at the new uh, the C class. It's like uh, the new E class look more of a regular sedan than a sports car, and then so I told my wife, it's like maybe I should just go get that Corvette. That Corvette looks super sexy. Guess what my wife said? Get it? Nope. My wife says hell no. <laughs> oh wow. Hell no. My wife actually said hell no. She's like. Hell no! Just go get yourself a a a, 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 a um. What did she say? Just go get yourself a Amga GTR. She said AMG what, what is she Amga. Oh. What is uh? She's a driver. She drives a C forty three AMG Night Edition. Okay. Yeah. That She's not gonna drive like anything Hellcat, that's slow. So. That, that Corvette's just like my Hellcat. It ain't no good in the snow. You know, snow, driving in snow, so long you have a tire that grip, doesn't matter. All right? People have this now, if you, thinking that if you have you a car, a sports car, it, and rear wheel drive, you're going to die in snow. No, just go get a freaking snow tire. Snow and ice rated tires, you'll be fine. No one is telling you to just throttle the entire thing so that the tire spins. On a Hellcat, even if you have a sports tire, you will still spin on the dry land. What's the ground clear? Well, yeah, but you got way, you got way too much torque for for the ice. Again, you know, take take off on the second gear. Don't take off on the first gear. Take off on the second <laughs> gear. I'll be driving in second gear the whole fucking time. <laughs> You know, we do shift, you know, once you get to a certain point, between the cross, between torque and horsepower, you shift. <laughs> right? Yeah, I, you know, I have no problem driving 510 horsepower, 500 something torque uh, with snow tire on my car, rear wheel drive. No issue. Don't get stuck. Yeah, you can drive a 707 horsepower. But then, that's the thing. One, you got you to gotta get to that horsepower. You don't hit, don't hit the peak horsepower just taking off. Yeah, but the supercharger on this one, it kicks in. You know, it, it there is no, it's not turbo, it's supercharged. It's not turbo, but so you, you see yeah. the, you seen the dyno chat, right? It goes up and down, right? You have to reach that horsepower range. You haven't got there. You, the RPM range will give you that horsepower between the convert, the conversion between torque and horsepower. So you, you just have to. I get all that. But I mean, there, there's no way they design a car like, that cannot um, drive in snow. Period. Every car can drive in the snow so long you have the right equipment. Yeah, it can drive in the snow for sure, but I wouldn't. I know you wouldn't. I know you wouldn't. But you know, for me, I just want to try to find a, a car that you know I can drive and have everything, all the gadgets that I like in there. I'm a nerd, right? So I, I like all the gadgets. I like all the, you know, stuff like that. Uh, all wheel drive RT kills it in the snow. Why do people always think that just because you have all wheel drive, it does it, it does wonders? Come on. I have friends who drive a Subaru all wheel drive with all season tires, spin the shit out of like on the highway, crashed and totaled the car, uh, driving 30 miles an hour in snow. Yeah, I've seen it too. Right? Just because you have all-wheel drive, it doesn't make it, it... It means nothing if the tire cannot grip the snow. It means absolutely nothing. You still need snow tire. In Massachusetts, at least. You still need snow tire. You know, we, we have, we have you know, six feet of snow throughout the winter season. You need winter tires. In Massachusetts, that's just the way it is. And then you get so used to, you know, taking off in the second gear, you know, moving forward slowly before you take off, and then you'll be fine. And don't hammer on your brake. You know, if you slam on your yep. brake, you're gonna slide forward. Yep. Right? That's the big one. Mm hmm. That's why I don't have ABS now. I don't even tap on the brakes, I just let it. <laughs> <laughs> you got ABS now, take care of all that. 
yeah, I mean, there, there is traction control and there's ABS and all that stuff that's gonna help you. Don't turn them off. Don't be an ass and say, like, hey, I'm a pro driver. I'm just gonna drive in snow with everything turns off, full racing mode, switch it on, so I can out the entire horsepower and it's drive through. You're gonna end up like Paul Walker. <laughs> all right? <laughs> Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Drive yeah. responsibly in snow. You know, when, once you go to drag strip and when a race the track do whatever you want they clean those roads nicely but when you're driving a regular road just you only need to get from point a to point b all right the difference between driving 60 miles an hour and 80 miles an hour is about three minutes you get to your place three minutes earlier do you really need that three minutes that's the problem here is people in the right lane go like 10 miles an hour in the snow and then the left lane they're doing like 80 90. So that's what always yep. makes it crazy yep. here. But the thing is that the, 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 those people who are driving left for 80, 90 are trucks. I see those trucks that zoom by. They don't give a shit. Like, what's snow? I don't even know. I don't even feel it. <laughs> they don't feel it. They just go right at it when they have truck, right? In, in fact, during the snow in Massachusetts, you don't even want to drive on the slow lane because they push all the snow <laughs> towards the slow lane. You got to drive through all the snow. So I never had a problem driving in the snow. Uh, front wheel drive, all wheel drive, rear wheel drive, because I always swap to a winter tire. Even with front wheel drive, I would swap to a winter tire. Because I don't trust, I don't trust any of the system if the tire don't grip, right? If tire grips, everything will work. If tire's not gripping, everything will not work. You get stuck, you with that gas, 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 and all of a sudden your car go into a limp mode thinking that, you know, the torque converter is broken or something like that because the tire is not spinning. Uh, there's no load on it. So, you know, it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't make sense at all But do I want to get another car? I do I really really is looking for another car. I just haven't found anything I like Like there's no People are not spending time to design cars that I like. That's the problem, you know, just like those cigar makers are not They're not doing the band and boxes I like Recently, you know, except except that pledge that pledge looks good that pledge is good. Martin, did you just uh, smoke a pledge yet? No, I have not. Um, I found a shop. Well, I looked online and it showed that a shop near me has it, the Lone Star State. So I'm going to go by there and go pick one up for a review. You wanted to let it sit for a week. I let my sit for a week. It did, it did separate the taste a lot better. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's you know... Well, Matt, where you live, you, you guys rarely snow, right? Fuck no, we get a lot of snow. You got a lot of snow? So yeah, that's why you have a Civic. <laughs> or truck. Yeah, that's why it's called Utah, <laughs> greatest snow on earth. <laughs> Say that again, what? Utah, greatest snow on earth? Yep. Come on, you guys don't have more snow than Massachusetts. Fuck. We get a lot of fucking snow, bro. We got ski resorts like crazy here. We got fucking people fly in from across the world to come ski here. That's what my wife want to do. She said, like, let's go to the mountain in, in Utah. I was like, next time we go, we'll just lounge at, at, at Matt's place and we'll go, we'll go snowboard. But then again, I don't think you're near it. Looking at the map. I don't think you're near here. those mountains. It's, yeah, there's four of them right here. The snow skiing mountains? Close to Park City, aren't you? Yeah. So yeah, that's what we should be doing. We should we'll go over there, hang out, and then we'll just drive up to the snow mountains and we'll snowboard, come back, I'll beat up, and then rest in I will rest in Matt's humidor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there probably won't be any snow though in September. No, I'm talking about like you know, November, December, maybe maybe February actually. February had the best powder. So. You know, I have not snowboarded for five or six years now. I don't even think I remember how to snowboard anymore. <laughs> All right, I'm yeah, jumping off, guys. You, you guys right. have a good one. Have a good one. Dude. Yeah, same here. All right, then. I'm about to jump off too, guys. Cool. Yeah, Josh says right. SSL Damn. ski trip. How many people in the SSL actually go to do winter sports? I don't think anybody does. We're all like summer person. I'll catch you guys on Saturday. All right. Talk to you later.
You know, you know what that means? That guarantees I can go to bath time uh, tonight without guilt. <laughs> right. Matt, today, today your your connection's super bad. I don't know. A lot of bunch of visitors here. I got, you know, they're all on my Wi-Fi and shit. So I think that's really fucking it up. Wait, wait, wait. They're all on your Wi-Fi? Yep. You, should, you should disconnect them. Just go on there and disconnect everybody. That's why we have guest network. <laughs> have you ever had those Wi-Fi wars? You, know, you guys know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, somebody will name their Wi-Fi saying a, a thing. Like, somebody named me. It's like, hi, my name is Bob as a, as a, a Wi-Fi name. Now change my Wi-Fi name to Hi Bob, and then he will change his uh, Wi-Fi to you know like something like What's up, you know. And a lot of time it will be like Don't steal my Wi-Fi kind of thing. I like, change the Wi-Fi name over and over again. This cigar is horrible. I don't know why you can name a cigar timeless when it's uh, when it's timed. <laughs> when it's totally timed. Oh my god! So yeah, I, I'm looking, looking forward to next year. I'm, uh, I think this year is, I felt like it's time to wrap up kind of thing. I felt, I got depression from the from from last two weeks. Literally depression from the last two weeks. Last two weeks I have so much work. I was sitting over here. Said, maybe, maybe we should just name someone just in case one day I decide to quit. That will take over Shadow Smoke Legion. <laughs> I was like, I was thinking that like over here. Albert, late, very late. Did you just woke up, Albert? I <laughs> just woke up. No, I didn't wake up, man. I've been working, so. This late? Yeah, it's a night class. So, so yeah. Good night. Where is everybody? Huh? Jeez, what? Would you run them off? Oh, no, no. They had to get off. It is, it is Wednesday. It is a work day tomorrow. Oh, well, whatever, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> What's work, huh? What's work? Uh, yeah. Especially when know. you love what you do, right? Things that make you minimum wage per day. You know? <laughs> yeah. Kidding. What y'all been up to, man? Uh, we're just chatting. Uh, Brendan was on. Uh, Daniel was on. My team was on. We just kind of chat a little bit about everything. Uh, right before you came out, I was talking about how I'm still looking for a car, but I can't find any cars I like. Matt think that if you drive Hellcat uh, in the snow, you're going to hell. So that kind of stuff. <laughs> I just don't want to crash a sixty thousand dollar car, you know. My canudo. I hear snub worthy. Uh, what? That? Hey Matt, if you got what? skill, you wouldn't crash. <laughs> Well, it's not me. It's the people around me. It's true. I mean, uh, uh, here's the thing. That no matter how safe you drive, you you cannot control people around you. And that's the number one number one reason people get into an accident. Somebody hit them. <laughs> right? Yep. You can be the best driver in the world. How are you going to avoid somebody lose control on the middle of the highway and decide to keep on you? You well, can't, I sold right? my motorcycle. Okay, so, Tony, how can that be number one reason? If half the people are the ones wrecking into the other half, how can that be number one? What? Number one reason of yeah. the car crash is inflated by another driver? No, I was saying, like, if there's a car accident, there's one person who wrecks in, into someone and the other person gets wrecked into. Right. So No, no. It, number one reason of a car accident is actually caused by another driver. But how can it be number one reason if both make up 100%, like 50 /50? No, because the other half is actually someone wrong to their wall themselves. How, how can it be number one? Holy shit, Albert. How can it be number one? Because most right. it happens most of the time where one is inflated by another car driver. It's, so if you calculate <laughs> it, right, when you have a pile up, that okay, well, so pileups are different. Right? Pileups are different. So if those people are causing pileups, then yeah, I could see 
the number of people being in a wreck be higher than the person causing it. So, okay. All right. So, right, so you actually count more. And the rest is people who, you know, uh, inflated by failure of car parts. So, you know, blown tires or something like that cause an accident. And the other one will be, uh, you know, self-inflated. You run into a wall or something like that. Right, right. That makes sense. Yeah. So, the number one reason is caused by another driver who lost control. Well, Josh Jones is on, huh? Yeah. The, the, cool. What's up, man? How you doing? Force oh. times distance equals work. What? <laughs> you forced to go to work? <laughs> <laughs> we work from home now. There's no distance. Yeah, that's uh, that's that that physics thing, right? Yeah. I don't know, man. When I'm like pushing up against a wall, it wears me the hell out. So how how how, how can you say I didn't do any work, man? When I'm tired. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, work has wear me out. War, work. I asked, I asked my I asked my physics teacher that, and he didn't really have much to say about that either. So. Like, all right whatever you know if anything that you should study in in any science it should be uh, uh it should be physics if you learn yeah, physics, physics you are yeah. gonna learn pretty much everything you need in science yeah. right math and physics can resolve majority of your issues in life okay right like do you not agree with that you, you, don't do. have, you don't have to learn about chemistry or biology. Those things, you don't have to learn it. If you learn physics, majority of your life facing issues could be resolved using physics. Cool. Yeah, we should, man. That sounds like a good idea. So is he working there now? Albert, we need to visit Maron at his new shop. They have one of the best boutique selection in the Metroplex. Metroplex. Is that the place that he was at that uh, they tried out? Remember how he was in that one room where TV was always yeah, on? Yeah, and yeah, stuff? yeah. Is that the place? Like, I, is I, it I new place? I thought he was his house. Is that? It's not his house. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I thought it was his house because that TVs and everything is walking through the stairs. So, what's up, Matt? I'm you want to think? You, am I am I making you think too much, brother? Now you're making my brain hurt <laughs> for talking about physics yeah yeah physics is life physics is how world works literally it's the most important part of science if you if you have a kid and they had to learn something they had to take something it's like hey i had to take a science class why should i take take physics because <laughs> do you really need to know all the uh elements in the, in the element tra chart no you don't <laughs> you don't all right just know your basics. But if you know physics, you'll know pretty much everything that you need. Like, you know, how how everything works. Because everything works. It's very practical, much. right? It's a very practical science. It is. Because quantum say, physics, not so much. Quantum physics, you can you can live without. I'm talking about regular physics. You yeah. know, like uh, uh, average living person, right? At home. Uh, talking about... Like everything, like electric, it, your, your, your light your light doesn't work. Physics can resolve your issues, right? You can figure out why your light doesn't work. Electricity, resistance, uh, ampage, all that stuff, you'll be able to learn to solve that problem, right? Same well, thing as right. plumbing, right? Your house had plumbing. Physics can make it work, right? Uh, uh, fixing up your house, physics. You know, construction, physics. Uh, your computer is not working you can probably resolve it with physics right because if you re majority of people don't realize that in the end computer is just a you know bunch of resistors working either yes or no and, and the right. program tells the things to go yes or no so when your computer is not working most likely one of the resistors or one of the uh, uh the small part, uh, part that that controls ampage is broken voltage was broken right once once the safety is broken get your multimeter you can fix pretty much everything, right? So physics, uh, uh, melting point and all that stuff, physics. It's all physics. So all you had to really learn in school, physics, <laughs> right? Everything else, 
Everything else you can you can Google. You can Google. Physics is one physics is one of those things that even if you Google, you're not gonna understand. Right? You need to learn physics. You need to learn how to calculate them, how to, you know, uh, you know, learn your calculation and how that thing works. You can't just say, I'm gonna Google physics, I'm gonna understand physics tomorrow. But something like, uh, how do you identify a female pig from a male pig? Google. Google will resolve your problem right there. They had a kid today asked me how to spell volcano. They're playing Scribble IO. Have you, have you heard of it, Scribble IO? I heard of Scribble. It's an IO, one of those IO games, you okay. know? Uh, and um, <clears throat> so they can basically, they'll draw shapes and then kids try to figure out what the shape is. They get points and stuff. So it's a pretty okay. cool little game we got going. So this girl's like, hey, how do I spell volcano? And I was like, G O O G L E. <laughs> dream without yeah, goal are just dreams and feel with, and feel disappointment to accomplish goal you need dedication and consistency that's a good line oh you know my wife showed me a a, a, a line today she asked me why don't I, I think it's true okay let me read it for you guys and I think it's lame so ready Here's what she said. She she posted for me. Oh, where is it? it? Says someone graduated at 21 but waited six years to get a good job. Someone had no education but is a millionaire by 21. Someone got married at 20 but divorced five years later. Someone got married at 30 but found everlasting love. You're not late. You're not early. You're on time. I was like, that's totally bullshit. If I'm always on time, I just like, I lie on my bed and do nothing because I'm always on time. I think it's quite the opposite. You get to choose whether or not you want to be on time. Don't be the eager one that always want to be early, right? You know, if you if you try to be eager one, try to be earlier than anybody, you might just fall, right? And don't be late because you're the last one in the place. There's no more pizza on the table for you kind of thing, you know? <laughs> Only you can decide whether or not you gotta be on time, right? Right time, right place with the right tool get you on time. But if you're late, if you're late because you stopped and got some food so you didn't have to eat the pizza, that's kind of cool. What I mean is like, there's nothing left for you at the end. Of it. You know, yeah, if yeah. you're late, there's nothing left for you. So, you know, being uh, the drive to do better is, is, is what gets you there, right? But eager, uh, uh, last, uh, things that make you feel like I need to be in front of everybody. I had to do it now uh, Before anybody else, you know uh, uh, you, you only get what was, was that the three things the speed? Quanti uh, quality and quantity you can only choose two of them Right, so you know when you want to speed you're not gonna get quality or the quantity that you need to do so You have to have the right time right place right tool uh, to, to get everything done to be on time. So yeah, you know, it's very important to not to think that When something goes wrong is you know people first thing is always blame someone right? Uh, had I was uh, had I had the tool back in 2002, I'll be number one youtuber just like PewDiePie No, well this guy went out his way to find tools and then build his uh, channel to the, the way it is today You know, it's not like just because he was there in the right time he had to put the right tool at the right time in the right place, right? Right. Agreed. So, you know, a lot of people was like, I failed because I didn't have the opportunity. I didn't have, no, you gotta, you gotta go out there and look it for yourself. You gotta prep it. It's not like, even if you had the opportunity without preparation, you're not gonna be able to do anything, right? If you wanna do something, go and do it, right? Go and do, do something and try it. And that's how you know whether or not you can do something, right? When, when this whole thing started, remember, um, uh, when this is Cigars Daily chapter group, if we if none of us just decide to go, you know what, we're gonna go on there and stream and start chat uh, about you know cigars, we will never have what we have today. We will never no, have you know if we didn't go out and say, hey, we gotta go create a group and then just hang out for everybody. We wouldn't have Shadow Smokes Legion, right? Right, I agree. So, the faster you run towards your destiny, the further distant yourself from your past. If you run towards that what lies in front of you, you will escape what's behind you. Dude, that's a little bit too deep. I didn't have my whiskey today yet. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. Sometimes if you go too fast, it's not a good thing. 
you know, going too fast is never a good thing. Right? Steady and progress is the best way to do things, I think. Same thing with smoking cigar, right? Smoking too fast, you're not gonna get flavor, you gotta burn out your cigars, you're not gonna get most out of it, right? You gotta waste your money, literally. Smoking too slow, then the cigar goes out, you have to relight it. Smoking the perfect time, perfect draw, perfect everything, then you'll have good enjoyment of your cigars, right? So, it's all about steady, but shortly going forward, uh, and really, you know, do All what right. you want to do. All right, let's get back to physics. So I, I remember taking a trigonometry class, and there's a small little book we, we worked out of called Plane Trigonometry. Okay. And um, in the very beginning, Thomas Jefferson, there's a quote by Thomas Jefferson that said, for a, for a, uh, a budding country, um, it's essential. It, it, this is the essence of it. I don't know exactly what the quote is. I, I tried finding it, but he basically said, "For a budding country, it's essential for every man to be able to 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 know and apply trigonometry." And the reason reason behind that will be because I'm kind of lost on that one. For a budding country, it's very important for every man to apply trigonometry. No, to, to learn, to understand, and use trigonometry. You don't hear that nowadays. You wouldn't hear people, oh, you really need to know trigonometry. But it's a pretty damn useful uh, useful uh, knowledge. Yeah, trigonometry yeah. is like a combination between Algebra 2 and uh, Geometry. Yeah. So, I mean, oh, I mean, you could skip you could. trigonometry by going to take Geometry hey, and yeah. Algebra two. It's a combination of two. But the study of triangles, right? And the study mm -hmm. of, of you know, we, triangulation is used all over the place, man, in a lot of a lot of various ways. Uh, uh, understanding distances and understanding how to um, find, you know, angles and use angles to get distances and stuff like that. It's amazing. Yeah, very practical. And I, so I can see that as they're trying to. Like he, I think he was a surveyor at some point. I think uh, I know, I know that George Washington was a surveyor, but I imagine they were all kind of, you know, having to deal with, deal, they were having to do different stuff. They were kind of, I want to say, Renaissance men, but they were pretty close to having to know something about, you know, various parts of, you know. You know, the funny part is the surveyor. We have so many surveyor throughout history, and including today, we continue to survey Earth, right? We still yeah. don't have a correct map of, of the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if, if anybody think that you, what you see on those Earth, like then on Google Earth or whatever, to, that that's the right shape, it's not. <laughs> okay? We, what we see on those, those like spinning Earth is not the right shape. Earth does not shape like that. Earth is... Land does not shape like that. So... Yeah. It's, it's, there's still a skew, a small skew in every land that we think the shape is. Because uh, I oh, think yeah. somebody said that if you compare the size of two countries, they're not, they're supposed to be the same size, but they're not uh, on the map. So I forgot Pretty which country they are. So yeah, yeah, it's just the the world still haven't got Earth figured out yet. You know, we tried to figure out space, but yet we still haven't had Earth figured out yet. Oh, shoot. This... No, we use space to figure out Earth, man. Huh? We use space to figure out Earth. No, because we already been on the moon and still couldn't figure out Earth. But we go up in space and that helps us figure out Earth. Did we figure it out? Well, they're working on it. No, so we still have. If you remember when's the last time, uh, you know, we, we already shot a freaking Tesla into space and we still haven't figured out Earth. Right, this one model guy's holding onto the steering wheel in the space right now, moving to nowhere, and we still haven't figured out Earth. You know, it's, what's amazing about that that Tesla thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they truly made that the appearance of that of that um, dragon dragon ship looked like a freaking car, if you will. Not even a not even a car. 
just sit in and look at, you know, and have these monitors, like these flat panels that they look at. I mean, they, they really didn't have much to do, did they? Did, were they piloting anything? Were they grabbed? You know, they weren't. They, it was all being done manual or uh, uh, automatically from the from the computers and stuff. Yeah, everything's automated. Obviously, you're not gonna keep someone in the space just to operate that. Yeah. So what I'm get, what I'm saying is is that they they made even the spacesuits look very modern. When I say modern, I mean they they did not look like they had. It, it looked like they were just a a transport, and that's all it was. I mean, they really they really um, they did the marketing for that. If you know what I'm saying. Oh they, yeah. They, they, I mean, that's, appeared, that's number one advertisement for Tesla. So they yeah. had to make it look cool. That's like saying right. like, you know, we should we should not design uh, the, the clothes for the uh, athletes to go to uh, Olympics. Let them look like a hobo. <laughs> you know, they're not yeah. going to do that. Yeah. It's crazy. Hold on one second, man. Hold on. Where'd he go? You gotta go poo poo. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was interesting. Like, they really, they really, uh, the PR for that was was pretty pretty apparent to me that 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 journey from from Earth to the space station and back was purely uh, vehicle like. It wasn't. It was not. Um, yeah. And you wonder just... NASA had all those budget and could not do that, but Tesla with a small budget can do it. Yeah. You know that just shows how much money we're wasting on NASA. Right, someone else with a, with a company that started off one single electric car can end up making a space shuttle that goes out there, shoots a freaking car out there too, and yeah. come back safely w with style. You know, come back like a boss. But we, you know, government program with you know billions of dollar cannot do it. Yeah, but, but if you think about it though, um, they narrowed the focus for what what Tesla was or what. Elon Musk was doing right, SpaceX. They narrowed the focus for that. <clears throat> Whereas NASA was not a narrow focus. They they're pretty much R and D, the research and development. So yeah, there's there's always money being wa wasted on on research and development, right? Yeah, research and devel development is the number one cost of everything. Everything that you're paying today is yeah. is majority paid to research and development, right? You buying a thousand dollars cell phone, it doesn't really cost you're a thousand dollars. Yeah, your goal in R and D is not necessarily to do it the cheapest, most possible way. Is to is to invest so that you're able to accomplish the goal of doing something right, and then you work back and try to try to trim costs and stuff like that. So they're opposing, you know, they're, they're opposing goals. That's what I'm saying. It still doesn't justify it. I still don't think that justifies yeah. the car. The, the, you know, yeah. I, I don't think so because you know every know. every entity has that, right? You budget it, you make sure it works. Research yeah, and development. Yeah. You, you need to know when to drop a project when it doesn't work, right? So just like you need to know when to drop a cigar when it doesn't burn right. But we got like uh, um, we got memory foam, we got Velcro, we got Tang, huh? We got fro, we got freeze dried. Uh, uh, ice cream and beat that man it was worth it all those really? billions was worth it really you're saying <laughs> velcro is worth it and memory foam was worth it come hell on hell yeah buddy velcro yeah what do you think man yeah velcro was worth it velcro was worth it man. matt when's the last time you used a velcro do you have velcro shoes <laughs> yeah. that's the thing that i took off every time i buy a wire First thing, I throw away. First thing. I love it. Literally the first thing I throw away of all my wire is those wire ties. So it's worth it, man. It's not the worth billions it. Billions of dollars was worth it. Billions of dollars to get Velcro. Yeah. <laughs> Memory foam is great, too. Memory foam? Yeah, that shit remembers. Wow. It doesn't. It doesn't. Eventually forget. <laughs> Eventually that thing gets Alzheimer's and forgets what, what shape it's supposed Alzheimer's to be. Alzheimer's phone? Have you seen my pillows? Holy shit. It forget what shape it's supposed to be in the first day I sleep on it. No. Did you see Did that you square pillow? Did you see Did the you cube pillow? Yes. 
It's because you're not buying the Davidoff memory foam pillows. Dude, my pillows are like five hundred dollars, and it will last me like two months. Because I don't sleep a lot. When I sleep, I make sure I have the best thing to sleep. Right? I have, you know, sleep number bed. I have, you know, you know those, you know, hundreds of dollar pillows. I have down pillows. I have memory foam pillows. I have beam pillows right next to my one side of bed. I have multiple pillows. All right. See, I think that's what I, I think that's where a lot of people get uh, kind of mixed up with everything, and, and you don't get the sleep that you need. Remember back in the day when we all had cheap ass pillows and everything, blankets? I mean, you slept good. No, you back in all the day, I have down pillows and down feathers um, blanket. They feel great. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't have memory foam. No, see, the thing is that I cannot sleep on a memory foam bed. I sleep very hot. So when I sleep on the memory foam bed, I get up, I feel like I had a fever. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. It's too hot for me. Yeah. And I don't like how memory foam, once you sleep on it, it sinks down. So when you move, you have a hole <laughs> right next to you for a while. Yeah. That's called great marketing. I mean, if they can get you to spend $500 on one pillow. Yeah, well, see, that's the thing. When you, when you don't real, when you think about it, right? Sleeping is what you do. It was most important for human to function. Sleeping is actually most important for human to function. So you'll do everything, try to get a good sleep. Especially like, you know, when you, as you get older, your spine is out of alignment and everything. It's really not caused by sleeping. It's really caused because like, you know, we're looking at our phones all day, looking at computers, sitting and all that stuff. But, you know, sleeping is so important that you're like, you know, what, what is a few thousand dollars that if I can get a good sleep, you know? My bed is, is, <laughs> It's like eleven thousand dollars. <laughs> My bet is eleven thousand dollars. Jesus Christ. So you know, I, I uh, and I, I I've gone through memory foam bed, spring bed, hybrid, uh, you know, all that stuff. And right now I'm sleep on the memory uh, 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 on basically air mattress. You know, that's pretty much what sleeping on the bed is. Then don't come to my house for the uh, the ssl meetup then because i'm still sleeping on futons bro you know when i go to japan when i go to my mom's place we put futons down on the ground and sleep and we sleep on tatami so those things are super comfortable but here before you say that's actually cheaper tatamis are super expensive for those people who doesn't know how much a tatami costs tatami costs hundreds and thousands of dollars to fit on the ground okay yeah, they're not cheap so that bit better comes with a, a, a handy on demand. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can tell you that, you know, if anything, it's true. If you go to any sleep member bed, they will, uh, they will tell you one thing. is that their bed is horrible for sex. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Their bed is horrible for sex. Don't do, don't do a sleep number bed if you decide to have sex on your bed. Um, I, I go to sleep with my CPAP mask and somehow I always wake up with it on the floor. That's because your bed is not comfortable. <laughs> if your bed is not comfortable, you sleep, you, you'll turn until you fall to the ground, which is flat, which is more comfortable for your spine. The best way to sleep is actually on a hard surface. The harder it is, the better it is. So. I have this, a CPAP. I use a CPAP. I love it, man. CPAP? I don't know. I can't put anything on my face while I sleep. I love it. Yeah, if, if I don't have it, it sucks, man. It sucks. I wake up 15 minutes later and I'm like, I feel like I, you know, just ran a marathon or something. So it's crazy. Because you couldn't breathe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm like Albert, wrong. man. The, the best like way Albert. to sleep is actually on the ground. The best way to sleep is actually on the ground. Believe it or not. Yeah, yeah but align your I hear you. So. I hear you. That CPAP though was a life changer for me, man. It it changed. It it really made a huge difference. And I and I I really resisted it because I didn't want I didn't it, it was just eh, I don't want a thing like that, and I didn't understand how much I was not I was missing I didn't realize how tired I was, you know because I was sleep I wasn't I was waking up all the freaking time I didn't even know I was waking up, and so I went to do the study, and um, and then I went back to get fitted for a CPAP, and uh, they were like. That was the best sleep I ever had, man. I was like, what the frick? I woke up at 6 o'clock. I went to bed around midnight, woke up at 6, and I was like raring to go, man. I'm like, what the hell? What the hell just happened? This is, this is awesome. 
Well, when you go home, you don't get to take the CPAP with you. So I had to wait like a week to get my CPAP. I was so pissed off because <laughs> I knew I had to get some good sleep. So I was like, man, can you be here tomorrow? You know? So it was like three or four days later they, they came. And uh, and I, I I love it, man. That's, that, it was about four years ago that I've been using it. And um, when you wear that, you cannot turn easily, right? Because it's running around your face. You yeah, but it, you, you get comfortable and you just kind of you're there, you know, and and, and it's kind of cool too. You, you get to know exactly how long you sleep. That's a neat thing too. I wake up and I look and I see, oh, I had six hours sleep, seven hours sleep. I used to sleep 10 hours, 12 hours a day and still be tired. Yeah, because you, you're not going to that, you know, deep state, deep sleep stage. You're, you're yeah, so you're, you're exhausted. You wake up exhausted. And, so here's how here's how it feels, right? If you want to experience what it's like for me without a CPAP, okay, sit here and like hold your breath and then let out and hold your breath again and let out and just keep doing that for like 15 minutes. But you got to pass out. You will pass oh, out. God. Yeah, it just kills you kills you so yeah it, it, it would just pass out so it, it's not it's not a good you know sleeping habit i don't know sleeping is very important like you know i will pay yeah. a lot of money for good sleep when i go out in japan uh, before i got to my apartment and stuff like that i will go to the most expensive hotel i can get just so that i can get a good sleep and then but then that's the thing though when i go to a good sleep i will go i will go back to the hotel and I'll fall asleep dead asleep at 8.30. I woke up the next morning at 5.30, fully awake, yeah. fully, yep. totally awake, ready to go. I can walk, you know, the entire day and then go back, pass out again. Next morning, I'll energize. You know, when you have really good sleep, you can really tell the next day. You're like, I'm ready to go. I'm awake naturally, and I don't even yeah. need any alarm. I say, what, what do I do for two hours, man? I'm awake. What do I do yeah. for two hours? <laughs> you, you'll feel... The day is much longer. You're much more energized, and you don't have that. When you wake up, you don't go like, oh, five more minutes, five more minutes. Yeah, it was remarkable. I mean, remarkable. And I know people complain about the CPAP, and they, I, I have it, but I don't use it. I'm thinking, man, you're killing yourself because it affects your heart. It affects a lot of things about your, your body, man. So it really puts you in danger. So how long have you been doing uh, the, the CPAP, Matt? Matt, how long have you? Ooh, I'd Matt say probably. CPAP? Yeah, I'd say probably 15 years. Wow. Oh, good for you, man. Yeah, you, you found out early, earlier. Well, the thing is, is I didn't know. You know, my wife kept saying, you're not sleeping and you're, 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 you know, holding your breath in the middle of the night and shit. And I was like, whatever, you know, didn't really pay much attention. <laughs> you didn't tell yeah. your wife that's because I got married, so I have to hold my breath. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, then I seen a guy on the news. They did an interview with the guy because he had a, a stroke. Uh, because he ended up finding out that he he had that and because uh, he was holding his breath and it gave him high blood pressure and all kinds of shit. And, and when I heard, heard, or heard him with the same symptoms, I was like, oh, shit, I better go get checked. And because uh, I was way too young, you know, so I'm like, I don't need that shit. And so I uh, went and got tested. And sure as shit, man, that, you know, I'm just I'm opposite of Albert. Mine was so bad that they gave me a machine the same day. So just take yeah. it home with you. <laughs> yeah. I had like I fifty two like, for I had like some I had like fifty two or some some there's a high number uh per minute or something like that that I was, events. I don't know what the event means, right. I think, but it was it was uh whatever the bad thing is, they said it's fifty two. The wow. event is how many times you stopped breathing. Breathing, yeah. Between, yeah. How many times you actually go like and then continue to breathe again, yep. you know, yep. like your body's like, you're dying, breathe. And then, and then, you know, that's, yep. but yeah, I, I rarely sleep now, so I don't have that kind of problem. I don't even know if I have an episode because I'll be sleeping for a few hours and wake up, continue to work. So, <laughs> you know, this is but where I'll I tell you like Albert, majority you know, of the time. Great sleep. I sleep on my back. I don't move around, so I don't have the issues that some people have with that shit moving and, and hard to, you know keep it on your face i don't have that problem at all but like albert i i i love that machine it puts me to sleep in a heartbeat yeah uh, so Every once in a while i'll be tired i'm like laying down for like watching tv and i during the day and i'll maybe like want a nap or something like that and i'll i'll be too effing lazy to like put the mask on and sure enough 10 15 minutes later i'm like oh i'm like 
crap, man, this sucks. I just, it, it really just makes me feel like crap. And then I, I'm like, all right, I'm going to take a nap. I'll go ahead and put it on and take a nap for an hour and be done with it. But yeah, it's so when crazy. you travel, you bring it with you? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Wow. I, I, I know that I can get a good sleep by having a good condition. So that's that's what I put myself to. Like, you know, I will go to a hotel. And it's like, what kind of bed do you guys have? What kind of pillows do you guys buy? You know, and what kind of pillow sheet you guys used? And then I would just buy the exact same thing, set it up so I can fall asleep. You know, also the temperature, too. I have to have a fan blow right at me when I'm sleeping. Constantly. Was that Ramos? Ramos? Ramos, yeah. Yeah, he said he had over 100. No, wow. he said this guy had over 100. He had 14. He had 14. Wow. Yeah, 100 a might be dangerous. 100, you might just die. Because one, any of those episodes, any of those events could result in not coming back. Like, yeah. if your brain didn't tell you, say, hey, you need to breathe, you gotta die, you might just die in sleep. Yeah. So, that's actually quite dangerous. If you've ever seen, if you've never seen that episode, just go on Google and just type it in. Somebody, you know, have that uh, sleep apnea. You'll see, they literally struggle for air when they wake up, like, <gasps> you know, they, they literally like dying. So, yep. for me, my only problem when I sleep is I grind my teeth a lot. And they tell me to put on the teeth guard in there, and I couldn't sleep. I could no longer fall asleep if I put it in my mouth. So, I just like, All right. oh, whatever. So, getting back to this uh, space thing, man. Fuck. Did you imagine going to Mars? And like they have to figure out a way you can smoke a cigar in that damn spaceship, man. You can't. Shit. There's only so much oxygen in there. You can't smoke in there. Dude, it's space people, man. They got to figure it out. Can they you imagine? All of a sudden, you're in the. You, let's say you're in the control cockpit. All of a sudden, you see a smoke just pass by you. You will panic it's, like no tomorrow. Not, it, not if it's cigar smoke, man. That that has a distinct aroma. Yeah, but then you, you, that's before you smell it. You look over, the whole back cockpit is all like smoke. You're like, holy shit, this thing's on fire. I'm in space. Can't even call 911. But just think about how cool that would be, like, be, like, in your new new planet, and, and you're able to, like, smoke a cigar. I honestly don't think we'll ever find a new planet where you can use, uh, it's good enough to move human there. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, man. Right? Even if there is, just look how long it takes to go to Mars. <laughs> yep. Right? And, and then I, I, let's say they find something uh, just outside of this planet. You'll never reach there. You, like, you know, you go on the, you go on the space shuttle, you'll be, uh, the person that's going to live there is not going to be you. Well, what's crazy about it is the way the, the, way the uh, planets, wrote, you know, um, not rotate, but... Um, what? Revolve? Revolve, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Um, you have to kind of rendezvous with the planet, right? You fly straight while they turn. So, but what I'm saying is, you have to wait till the planet's kind of nearby you, and you have to kind of get go there. But once you get on it or near it, that son of a bitch is going way back around. So, I mean, you know, the the distances to the planets are, are kind of an interesting thing too. Well, not every one of them has that mu that much of a loop, like like you know, like Pluto, you know. Not not every planet I, I have that big of a loop. So yeah, I was watching a thing though about that where they're trying to figure out which planet's the closest to the sun, and is it really, or is it? Are, are there times when other planets are closer to the sun than that planet? And it all has to do with the with you know the way they uh, orbit the orbits. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Josh Jones asks, how long it takes to go to Mars? I think it's like five or six years is what it winds up being. Uh, what? Okay, I googled it, and their most closest estimate is about twenty-one months. Oh no, actually, it says nine. Nine months to get there. Nine months to get back. It says. What was I thinking? Five or six years for? There's something. Back in the day, we don't have uh, we don't have a space shuttle that will go that fast. Now, uh, b before it was years, and now it's about twenty-one. And now it's about nine months to get there. So, however, however, even if you get there, there's only enough supply for you to stay there for three months. And that's uh, we're talking about rovers and stuff like that. You can't get out. You know, you, there's still no oxygen. So, 
you're not gonna find see human will evolve to be in this situation so if you put us in a different situation it's not gonna work there's a reason why those those uh, planets don't have any living things there because you can't and even if you find it let's say even if you find it if the sun dies the end that doesn't matter which which one it goes to sun dies the end right so Jeez, I started to go stir crazy on a 12 hour flight. Yeah, if you go on a space shuttle, you're tied down there for like, you know. First, you had to find, uh, you had to deal with six Gs <laughs> to get there, to just get out. Once you get out, you gotta deal with claustrophobicness and the food tastes like crap. <laughs> then you don't get to uh, smoke cigars, man. And you don't get to smoke. But you know how good that would be? Uh, if you let's, let's say if you got a cigar that you think that might have uh, beetles, you just put it outside in the space for a little bit and take it back out. <laughs> Everything's dead on that. <laughs> just it's like, hey, I'm gonna go with the space walk. I'm gonna carry my cigar with me, you know, and come out and come back. And when you come back, that cigar will be nicely frozen, right? Yeah. Vacuumed, yeah. no air. All the eggs are killed. Perfect cigar. <laughs> yeah, that'll work, man. And you can control the perfect humidity for it because there's nothing else that will affect the humidity. Yep. Right? You're in a, in an environment controlled uh, uh, space shuttle. So, I don't know. I, I just really think that we're so far off of it. And this whole thing about going to space and finding another uh, livable planet was just a daydream. Because even if you find it, well, number one, you can only carry so much people at a time. And how many people we have here? Yeah. We have billions of people. And only what 10 people max on a space shuttle you're not gonna make it you're not gonna make it and all the people who cannot handle the 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 the, the uh what's the right word the pressure shooting out of the space you know <laughs> so you know you, you, you most people is gonna die under six times their own weight right if you imagine putting james on a space shuttle and shoot it out Six times his own weight. He's not gonna make it. <laughs> He's not gonna. Make it. He'll be pancaked before he goes there. You cannot have any open wound either. If I need like wounds and stuff like that, you cannot have it. It's just pop. So it's it's not not happening. Not happening. So in the book, the margin they send supplies in droves that crash near where they would south land the people later. Yeah, I, 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 I think a lot of these research isn't going to do anything good for this generation. Everybody that's in this chat right now will not see the result of it. You're not. You give another 10 years, you think that, you know, they'll be like, hey, no, hey, you know what? I created something to create atmosphere in Mars and we can live in Mars now. You think that's going to happen? You know, we made it this machine to bring water to Mars and we made it rain so it creates ozone. Yeah, it's all pipe dreams, man. Right? But it's not gonna but do anything. What, what comes from it though, but what comes from it is the research and 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 you, you wind up with, with byproducts of it. I mean that there's there's something to be said about that, man. Well, true, you get like the space shuttle use materials, Kevlar's and, you know, uh, space grade aluminum, all that stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, if you focus on making those products, instead of saying now we're going to go to space, space station, you'll still, you'll still be able to uh, develop those products. Yeah, that's but if you, think too, if you think too, the, the research they're able to, to do from the space station about our Earth, I mean, they 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 have started focusing more attention on, on the Earth, from the space station. Right? But those research didn't doesn't change anything. It, you know, no, it helps you understand. It helps them understand what's happening on our on our planet better. Like okay, for the last five years, what research has uh, has actually uh, allowed you to? They they started looking at the uh, thunderstorms and stuff, and how lightning and all that's happening and. They're able to see stuff like that. Oh, they were able to see uh, crops and stuff and and help. Yeah, I saw that too, where they were able to kind of, I don't know the specifics on this, Tony, so I can't really talk too much about it. But 
they were saying that they were able to see certain things with the crops using certain imaging and they were able to help farmers and stuff with well, you can uh, do with that with without doing the space program i agree but but the point is is they were up there and they turned their attention to some of that stuff and they were able to help solve some problems i i feel like you know that's just like you know we wanted to even though this whole space thing is not generating anything we had to find a reason to sell, tell you that that money would take do something that could be you know you're on that's possible right I, hey, I, I know that one. still remains they're there and they're able to do some stuff like that they have the capacity to do some of that thing whereas okay now hey we got these crops we want to be able to see what's going on okay let's put a satellite up there oh screw that we ain't got the money for that you know what i mean okay that one thing that we did good with space programs is gps yeah, exactly. But right. that was long ago. Carbon right. fiber. Carbon fiber is not necessary for a space program, is it? Yep. Nanotubes. Um, Nanotube was not developed for a space program. Nanotube was a part of the part of the research for battery. It's not part of it's not part of the space program. Ta-da! I don't know, man. I'm just throwing stuff out. <laughs> Adidas coming out with the shoes and clothes that are made out of recycled polymers. By 2024, you will be able to return your used item that will be used to create new product. You know, we're already doing this, okay? We're already doing uh, uh, recycle, and they will recycle 10% of the product and then sell it to you at double the price. We're already doing that. Yeah. You know, I'd rather buy brand new stuff with the uh, new material. Re Yes, recycled product will probably make uh, the current resource on Earth a little bit longer, but I don't think that's that solves any problem because we only recycle re small, small amount of stuff. Like all the stuff that you do for the re recycle program, only less than ten percent are being reused. And I was watching the thing about uh, this this guy. This guy does like practical engineering or something like that. Is the name of the uh, YouTube channel, and he was talking about asphalt and how prolific asphalt is in the, in the, in the world. Like it's used as a, as a road, road surfaces and how it can be recycled. Like, and they even have machines that will, they'll, will come through and harvest the asphalt and then relay the asphalt back down behind it. And like, they basically Talking redo about the asphalt. Whole you know, if oh. asphalt was that useful, we wouldn't have potholes. <laughs> okay. We have potholes yeah, you know, every year. You have a lot more asphalt than there is concrete. No, hey, I you know in Asia there's plenty of roads made out of concrete and they last for hundreds of years. Hundreds uh, concrete don't last that long, man. No way. Hundreds of years. Well, that's why they're they're actually replacing the asphalt with concrete. I agree, but I'm just saying it's it's, it's, it's used a lot. I mean, it's very flexible, whereas concrete's not as flexible. Well, that's why you you we make a gap so that it flexes. But then you know concrete stuff in asia or even in majority places that have earthquake they use concrete to make buildings instead of asphalt for a reason yeah right because concrete is much more of a you know because because asphalt is so pliable that's why you always have pothole you know one snowplow goes over boom comes off right, right? It, it, it constantly shifts it constantly comes up so you know in a way i actually don't like asphalt you know, that's why people like to have like you know those paved rocks for their uh, driveway rather than asphalt because asphalt is horrible right asphalt is horrible at, at, you know yeah it's cheaper it's you know easier to pave a new road but it's 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 not a long stain uh, sustaining material longevity no. is not yeah. say that again matt the longevity of the asphalt is not there yeah Asphalt is not. It's not. It has a hard time with weight. It has a whole. It has a real hard time with weight and heat. Well, that's heat and weight. Yeah. That, yeah. Right, and that's what so, we always see them doing road work. Heat and weight, you know, doesn't bother concrete all that much. And concrete building houses is great insulating material compared to wood. Actually, you know, in 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 Asia, majority of the houses are made out of concrete. Before I come to America, I didn't even know there's such thing called insulation. What? Yeah, that's right. Because y'all use those that that rice paper. No, right? we all, all of the buildings are made out of concrete. 
And they are. I'm going to break it. All of the buildings are made out of concrete, and they 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 keep temperature really well. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Right, and they they. But yeah, you so you don't need the insulation. You don't, you don't need yeah. the insulation. You don't, you don't, and then the and the building lasts hundreds and thousands of years. Over here, you build a house, uh, like 20, 30 years later, you have to check if your wood is rotted. You know. The, yeah, that's funny. You know, so I'm I'm kind of joking about the rice paper. I'm like, yeah, they use rice paper. I'm like, well, we use chalk. <laughs> He's, he's chalk paper. <laughs> so it's going to paper. be okay. So yeah. Raymond says it's going to be 100% recycled, and you will get a discount for returning the item towards buying a new product. Yes, they did. Uh, no, see, here's the thing when they say 100% recycle, you gotta know this, okay? 100% of the material is recycled. However, when you re recycle those things to make something, you don't use 100%, you end up with less. You ended up with less. That's the problem. You're using more energy to recycle those things than creating new. Right? Just imagine how how when someone wants to recycle paper boxes to make new paper boxes. You gotta break down those paper again and you have to insert new fibers just so that those paper boxes can be formed as 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 boxes. You cannot hundred percent recycle anything. There's no way to hundred percent recycle. Like even plastic, you cannot remelt it and create something without putting new plastic in there. So it's just the way it is. There's nothing that is 100% recycled. You always lose I'm something. That, man. I'm I'm always, she makes me recycle all kinds of crap, man. I hate it. I, I, I always say this, okay? If you don't recycle, you're creating jobs. If you recycle, you're creating other people's money. Because if you don't recycle, you. when you go, when when all those things that got recycled go to a recycling plant, there's still people sorting things out. Even if you put all the trash in trash, they still sort it out. So the, the, you know the recycle program is actually made it so that it's easier to resell those things to other people so that they can charge you double. Well, here's what kills me: is like we have a recycling bin, right? It's as big as my damn trash can. Mm -hmm. You can't put glass in it. You can't put any fucking pizza boxes in it. You can't do none of that bullshit, right? I'm like, well, what the fuck are we recycling then if we're not recycling glass and all that stuff? So, but then what really gets me is I'm paying the city to have this trash can. And, you know, I can only put so much shit in it. When you think about it, you'll think that a lot of things should be recycled, right? Glass bottles should be recycled, right? Because you can actually right. technically melt down glass and redo glass. It's possible, yes. right? And you think papers, but they will tell you any paper that has wax coating cannot be recycled. <laughs> so a pizza box, that's why you can't put pizza box in there because it's wax coating in there. All right? See, I like, uh, I, like, I like the big old bottles that they could like take back, and rinse out, and then reuse. But it's so heavy, back right? in the days, like milk jars. It's so heavy. They don't want to. Yeah. They don't, it, it's, it... Oh, glass, even glass is not 100%. So glass, they recycle by rewashing and using it. That's called recycle. If they want to remake glass and melt it down, you'll lose some in the, in the process of recreating them. So it's not 100%. Nothing is 100%. You'll lose some in the process of recreating things. That's a physics concept right there. Nothing's 100%. Nothing's hundred percent. You gotta lose some. Yeah, you cannot create energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. You have to put something in there for something to create. You know, you in the process of rebinding those molecules inside the glass, you need to introduce new glass in there. So, but like you said, Tony, we are like they they they're they're training us to, you know, uh, separate all of our recyclables. So that, yeah, when they get it back to the plant, there isn't nobody to have a job to do it because they don't have, you know, you're doing it for them. Yeah. When my you're thought is, them, they lose their job. So my thought is, how, I don't control how water comes to me or how the packaging comes to me. I, I, I'm not in that board meeting, you know, where I get to decide how shit's packaged. You know, I might buy it and that might be their their motivator why they're going to use certain things but if they're if they're worried about plastic bottles then they need to go to the plastic bottle makers and say hey figure something else out you know don't don't be hassling me the guy trying to you know consume the product that's a funny it's, part though when when people are talking about plastic it's actually because ocean life right number one thing is about plastic is yeah, of course. ocean life 
But she here's the thing, though. The no one, no one actively go toss their plastic bottle in the ocean. Those plastic bottles actually got there. Uh, well, number one, obviously tourism is number one reason, right? Number yeah, two, you know where it's coming from? It's coming, it's coming from India. It's coming from China. It's coming from um, some other countries like that where they are not regulating their plastic. As much. But that's where I'm getting my point, right? So actually, it's how that happens actually because we recycle all that stuff they crush it into a cube they transport in the boat and they fall off while they're being transported they fall into the ocean that way no one just go actively and, and then landfills they put it in landfills all right now if landfill has good enough containment you wouldn't have that problem the problem is that they, they just dump it in there and they don't care that has nothing to do with materials right technically in material everything breaks down eventually yeah it will take a lot of half-life to do that but so is paper. How long would it take for paper to break down? How long would it take for glass to break down? How long would it take for, for, for metal to break down? Metal never breaks down. You know, it will rust, but then, you know, you end up with a pile of rust, but it doesn't really break down. None of the things will break down in our lifetime that way. Right? If you think about it. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. So all those things is just a ploy to make more money, really, if you think about it. You know, there, there's there's a need, there's industry, right? Because there's so many things that it can be reused to make materials. So they, hey, you know, we need to recycle. Japan yeah. is like the number one country to recycle. Everything, everybody feel like it's their job to recycle, right? Literally, if you have magazine and paper, they have they tie it up and put it outside for recycling all the time. Even my mother does that, right? Everything is recycled. They feel like it's part of their job. However, do you see Japan has any less trash? <laughs> You don't. I know this, man. We go to the Chinese market, and there's like plastic on every freaking thing, man. Plastic this, plastic that, plastic that. Everything's all packaged with plastic. Crazy. Uh, the biggest. More so than I see, like in our in regular. When I say regular, like you know the Kroger, Walmart, stuff like that. They did she find bacteria that eats plastic recently so uh hopefully they can mass produce those but then again they will probably have a new disease out of those bacteria <laughs> of course yeah they find that, that, 2021. they find that bacteria will eat plastic but they only eat so much before the bacteria dies so you need a large amount of it you know instead of trying to get people to figure out recycling program find things that will actually break down the things that you need to break down that's that's what they really need to, to do they're going I always to like the guy, I always like the guy that he invented an acid he created an acid that would eat through anything man hydrochloric acid <laughs> well well you would eat through it it would eat through everything the, the mm -hmm. acid would eat through everything only problem was he couldn't find anything to kit put it in <laughs> true okay okay <laughs> unless you can make a material out of that acid. Then you have resistance to the acid. Right, right, right. Yeah, Physics. <laughs> <laughs> Turning natural gas into plastic. The point is that those those material that we're using today eventually will run out, and that's the when will it run out? When will it run out? That's the question, right? So, the only thing that should be recycled is our like precious metal, like gold, silver. You know, things that you need for electronics, those make sense to recycle because... Lithium? Should lithium be recycled? Um, sure, I guess. <laughs> using the hell out of lithium, aren't we? Yeah, we use the hell out of lithium, but you now lithium recycled probably won't do any good. Now, aluminum is kind of an interesting thing, right? That's made out of ore or like, you know, aluminum is not, not a... Um, you have to use like electricity to make aluminum, don't you? But aluminum is an element, so. Yeah, it's an element, but it's like it's, yeah, it, it, it's it's more it's like um, uh, it's made by by changing. Right, it's, it, it's, it's made by you know uh, uh, what, what you know for those people who doesn't know element is just uh, something that you cannot break down anymore, uh, basically, but you, you can still create it. So uh, I think aluminum is created in a way. So. But you still should recycle them. You know things like that, like the own, uh, those things we use all the time should be recycled because they never break down. They're element. They they don't break down anymore. So only way to break it down is to rust a uh, oxidize a, a, a aluminum. So 
I don't know. It's just there's no there's no one good way to save the earth. So great up, shut up, great up, great up. If you're watching this, shut up. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, there, there there's no good way, and I, I don't I can tell you that I don't recycle. The only reason I recycle is because I have no place to put my paper box when they're breaking down. So I put in the recycle box. But if I, I have regular trash, I can put the, uh, the paper box in there, I would. Okay. Yeah. If you live out in the country, you just burn everything. Bauxite is the ore for aluminum. Yeah, you or, have to. Okay. If you live in the country, you either bury it or you burn it. That's what you do. Either bury it or burn it. Yeah, pretty much. What? Well, after you burn it, all you left is all those uh, metals uh, that you but, never use. But they don't burn it; they bury it. They'll go bury shit. That's why you burn it. But but that's the that's thing. Everything, everything, like everything that uses those material that you can recycle, probably creates some sort of pollution. So <laughs> if you just burn them and just get the material out, you're polluting the earth. So eventually, there there is no way around it. There is no way around it. Just you, just live the way you are. Just, just live the, you know. Let science does its progression, and the progression will eventually find a way for the next generation, just like how our generation figure out a way for this generation, right? Yeah, they'll Once, they'll develop better batteries, you know. Uh, that's you know they'll they'll work it out, man. I am they'll very work. excited for carbon batteries. If a battery is gonna last as long as they say it's gonna work, I will spend any money to buy carbon batteries. Yeah. So I mean, I mean one battery lasts me three months. Hell yeah. Cell phone not have to charge for three months. Hell yep. yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. Anyways, dude, Albert, you smoke slow, man. I was trying to, you know, talk until you're done with your smoke. Your smoke is still like only halfway down, yo. It's tutorial, man. It's yeah, I ain't, I ain't waiting for that. It's too fucking cold. Yeah. So anyways, oh, uh, I think that's it. it that, that will be it for today. We'll, we'll see everybody on Saturday. Minus Matt. Matt's going to be drunk and weird, so. Yeah, we don't want to see him naked again, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, what was that about, Matt? Did you remember all that? I mean, do you have to go back and watch the video? Oh, no, no, what? my team reminded him. <laughs> my team reminded him today. Yeah, my, so. team reminded him. yeah. <laughs> my team reminded him by showing yeah, everybody the picture again. So Because we saw that where you tattooed the 107 to you. Did you? Did you tattoo 107? <laughs> did you tattoo 107? No. Yeah, no. Of you did not. not yet, not yet. Yeah, so yeah, that's it for today. We will come back again on Saturday where I will talk, I will, I will choose a, uh, you know what, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna smoke this for my Saturday birthday smoke uh, after I fix this throughout the week and then we'll go from there. All right? Have a good speaking night. Speaking of tattoos though, man, speaking about tattoos, Tony, before you go, huh? what, what, what does somebody get, the first person to get their OG number or Shadow Smokers Legion tattoo? What do they get? Well, if well, obviously, if they get uh, Shadow Smokers Legion tattoo, I'll, first thing is I apologize to them for having to get that tattoo. I'll probably send them a couple of Davidoffs, and I'll send them a legal letter about the uh, copyright on that logo. <laughs> legal letter. <laughs> All right. So yeah.